Rutgers Pro Day 2014 is on the air. We're at the practice bubble here on the Rutgers University campus in Piscataway, New Jersey, as our vision presents for the fifth time Rutgers Pro Day with 25 NFL teams represented and 17 players for the Scarlet Knights trying to impress them this afternoon. Hi everybody, I'm Bruce Beck. Good to be with you once again on Rutgers Pro Day. And what an opportunity this is for these young men to show their stuff in front of the NFL scouts. It's Rutgers' own combine, if you will. This is not Indianapolis, this is Piscataway. Everything is done the exact same way. The clocks will be out and the stats will be marked throughout the day. So many free agents over the years have been signed from Rutgers and the reason is, I think, because of Rutgers Pro Day, which has given these guys the opportunity who don't go to the combine a chance to show their best stuff. And a lot of players have been prepping for, for months for this, trying to get ready to get that shot at the NFL. Now, there was a free agent here back in 2009. He participated in Rutgers Pro Day. He ended up going to the NFL. He's been there for five years, and today Jamal Westerman is our color commentator. <laughs> Good to have you with us, Jamal. Uh, great to be here, Bruce. You know, it's a great day today. These guys are going out, and they're really going to show what they're going to do today on this field. So you were here five years ago. <laughs> Hard to believe, you know. You've, you've grown in more ways Definitely. than I can imagine. But there was nervousness, and there was uh, anticipation, and there was apprehension. Take us back for a moment. And definitely, today is a huge job interview for these guys. I mean, they're going out today, and really the last four years of college is going to be put into this one day. I mean, it all starts here for a lot of these guys. You know, some guys are going to get drafted, but for a lot of these guys, it's what they do today on the field, not only in the testing, but also in the field just that's going to depend on where they go, where they end up, and how long they play in the NFL. I like that, a job interview. That's really a good way to break it down. And a lot of guys, it's not just about stats, it's not just about numbers right. today, it's about meeting with the scouts, talking a little bit, giving them a feeling that they'd be the right guy to play for an NFL team, because you hear character issues are it's important, uh, especially today with the way the world has changed and evolved. So don't you think that's all part of the process? I mean, today's a huge day because because they get, this is their first time to get in front of scouts, to talk to the scouts. You know, when they were in college, the scouts would look at them, but they can never interact with them. Now the scouts can really talk to them, see how they do in drills. When they don't have a good number, how do they react? You know, can they come back from it and bounce back? Maybe run the slow first 40 and second go to blazing speed. So today is really, it kind of encompasses everything that has to do with the NFL. Character, hard work, dedication, and really just letting it fly out there. Let's talk about the early part of the day. It began with breakfast for the scouts and staff. That was at 8 a.m. this morning. Then the scouts uh, met with Coach Flood and his staff right. to talk about the individual things that they might see from a player other than, as we mentioned, the statistics. Testing began at 9.15. So that's the first part. That's that bench press. Did certain guys <laughs> impress you in there? Like you know, with their power and with their ability to show, uh, I think, endurance strength is really the key. The thing that's huge with the bench press, not only power and endurance, but it shows dedication to their work ethic. And a lot of guys, you know, scouts might say, oh, he's not that strong, but he comes out today and does a big number. It's like, man, he really worked hard during his preparation for the pro day. I mean, Marcus Thompson came out and did 27 reps, which is huge. He's a Over DN. Over 200. Right. Which is, you know, huge because 27 reps at 225. Wow. From DN to linebacker shows that, you know, he's strong, he's durable, and can hold up against the run. So now we move on today to all of these other activities, and we've got the vertical jump, we've got the broad jump, the 40-yard dash, which we are going to bring to you live. That's, that's part of what this Pro Day is all about, is you take a look at the vertical jump. By the way, at the combine, the best was 42 inches, Ryan Shazier of Ohio State. Uh, back to the 40, we're going to bring that to you live. We started incorporating that in our coverage a couple years ago. We think you'll find that uh, to be a lot of fun at home and intriguing. We also have the 20-yard shuttle, the three-cone drill, and the 60-yard shuttle. So we're not going to bring you all of the uh, coverage from each individual event. We're going to have some live guests here, some former Rutgers players. We're going to give you a little overview of what's going on. Anthony Facilli is going to be roaming the grounds trying to give you uh, some tidbits and some interesting stories to share as well. So that's all a part of our Pro Day coverage here on our vision. So as these guys do this vertical jump, 
this is standing still. And, and so many guys, you think of Larry Fitzgerald in the NFL, <laughs> for example. He's always running full speed, right. and then his leap is incredible that he can get off that way. This is tougher to do. This is from a standing, standing position, still position, Jamal. But the vertical jump is huge because it shows lower body strength and that burst and that explosiveness that these athletes have to have. You know, receivers that can jump high is a premium, especially down in the red zone. You know, small guys that can get up high, even though they don't have the height, but they can get up high to catch a touchdown pass, you know, over the DB. So we've got 17 guys here, including kickers for Rutgers, who are all taking part in this uh, pro day. Joe Benke, Tyler Belia, Andre Civil, Brandon Coleman, who was at the combine and, and showed some pretty good stuff. So he'll just be working on the individual skills, which is the end of the whole pro day, where after they go through these specific drills, the scouts get to really run them the way they right. want and see the way they react. What's that like? You know, that's important because now the scouts can put them through the individual drills. You know, they can put them through running routes, maybe running the hitch, running a, a slant, running a you know, deep fly to see how they catch the ball in traffic and different things like that. We, with the D-line and the linebackers, it's huge for them also because they can work on the way they're going over bags, the way their body moves, you know, running straight and maybe touching the ground to see their athleticism, to see the way they turn, the way they bend, and the way they're, you know, the ankle mobility and the ankle flexion. So the individual drills, the scouts can get hands-on with the guy. It's no longer 40-yard dash. It's no longer shuttle. It's no longer bench. It's actual football drills, and the scouts can really throw drills in that they may do week to week, you know, in their practices and their off-season program. So it's huge for these guys to come out during the individual drills and really show what they can do, you know, as a football aspect. Because now you got to throw the numbers out there, and now it's what can you do on the field, running routes, catching the ball, you know, breaking on routes and different things like that. Also part of our group today, Nick DePaula, Chase Dodd, Dallas Hendrickson, Robert Jones, Antoine Lowry, uh, Jamal Morrell, Nick Marsh, the Rutgers punter. You've got Jamil Morrell as well. Karan Pratt, who had an unbelievable season, was the team MVP, won the Homer Hazel Trophy. Marcus Thompson, who's been impressive already down in the weight room area, and Lou Toller, so 17 guys with a great opportunity today in front of the scouts here in the Rutgers practice bubble. Hey, you talk about preparation for this. Were some guys for the last several months just totally honed in on getting ready for this individual combine because this is where they're going to earn some money. The thing about the combine is the first time that you're kind of going out there for yourself. You know, it's no longer what you did in college. It's no longer what you did in high school. It's really the first time you, you can get a chance to kind of just focus in on your 40-yard dash, your bench press, which is different than preparing for a game, preparing for an offseason. So it's really a chance to get away. You know, some guys go to different places. Some guys were in Martinsville at Test. You know, some guys were down in Florida. To get away and kind of focus on, okay, this is a huge job interview for me, and I have to get ready. And you really see a lot of guys come out here, and they might – do things you're like, man, I, I didn't know he was that fast or I didn't know he was that strong. It's because they kind of just locked in and said, you know what, this is my opportunity to show everybody what I'm about. Sounds good. So we're going to watch a lot of these players and we'll take a short break and, and we'll come back with much more of Rutgers Pro Day. We'll get to some individual drills and find out about a lot of skills that so don't go away. I really believe that the discipline and the toughness of your football team is, is built first in the weight room. And to have somebody like Jeremy Cole leading our strength and conditioning, I know that's going to get done every day. Coach Wilson. Hello, sir. Getting ready to start the first lift of the day. Defense is meet, offense is going to lift. Time to go to work. My program starts in the weight room. All right, let's go. It's so close. Like, like, like everything that we do, I had to understand I had to resort back and I had to look back at what we did last year that put us at the level and put us at the place to where we got last year. No if, no buts about it. We trained to a certain intensity, to a certain level, and it was the reason why we ended up where we ended up. No if, no buts about it. But you make a decision. Each and every day you wake up, I'm going to be the best at what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the best in the country. We're on a mission. Let's go. Let's go. The moment they hit those doors at the weight room, it, it has started and it's on. That's the call. We got inverted row over in. 
Big rip. My hair got plate crushed. 15 reps. We are moving. I'm controlling this thing. I'm up, 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 up. Hey, guys, guys. People that want to rule the world. That's surviving. He is relentless in everything he does. After 270 pounds. I want to know who would just work when they're in levels of fatigue or stress are still able to push themselves and push someone else. I really believe that the discipline and the toughness of your football team is, is built first in the weight room. And then after it's all said, no, then it takes somebody to trust in the technique. And now you can seek out and say, guess what? I'm back to focusing on big picture. So now it's nothing to me to come here and crush the lifts. You gotta put yourself in that place each and every day though. That's tough to do. See what I'm saying? Big picture. We're in better shape today because Jeremy Cole is our strength coach. If you were going to describe Jeremy Cole in one word, that word would be intense. And when you go in his weight room, you're going to be ready to go. He got that motor that you need to, to guide young people and to, to get them to do the right things. Now, put on probably like 25 pounds solid. As soon as I got the ruckus, I put on like 50 pounds. Now, at the end of the day, you're going to get big working with him. You know, we get guys ready for the league here in terms of the way we train. In terms of the way we practice, in terms of the way we go about our game. Touchdown number 35 in his career. Being at Rutgers definitely got me ready. Whenever I get a chance, I'm always coming back. There's a reason why those guys come back here and lift. They can lift anywhere in the world. I try to remind them what got you to the place that you're at right now. And the only way to do that is to continue to show them what I'm doing with the guys right now that are at the Rutgers football program, and then they see, hey, you know what? I remember that. I understand that. That's what got me to where I'm at. Hey, yo, great reps, great technique. Great reps, great technique. Let's go. You got to find your leaders. You see, and you put them in position, and you try to see if you can lead, they actually teach somebody Jeez. something. Jeez. Jeez. You know, you kind of just pick and see who the guys are working hard, leading by example. Come on, yo, 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 yo. Straight effort. Straight speed, getting out the stacks, all that. So let's get it. You look at that scoreboard at the end of the game. It says Rutgers. It doesn't say Cassini Green. It says Rutgers. That means a team. Welcome back to Rutgers Pro Day. I'm Bruce Beck along with Jamal Westerman. Anthony Fusilli will join us as well. Right now the vertical jump is going on and the broad jump concurrently. The vertical jump is all about lower body explosion and power, which is what Jamal was talking about earlier. The athlete stands flat-footed and they measure his reach. The difference between the reach and the flag the athlete touches is his vertical jump measurement. And we're picking it up right now with Robert Jones long snapper for the Scarlet Knights out of West Caldwell, New Jersey. Played 51 career games and four years at RU, all starting at the long snapper position. Up next, Antoine Lowry, and I'm sure you know the other Lowry pretty <laughs> well. That's Antonio, who was a linebacker for Rutgers from 2007 to 2010. Yeah, a Antoine, you know, last year he had a, a big year. He was all Big East, and he went out this year and after the season, he played in the East-West Shrine game, which was huge for him to get out and kind of get coached by other coaches to see what he can do. I mean, he's been playing guard a long time. I'm look, looking for him to have a big day today. I mean, this season wasn't, you know, his best up to par, but I think today he's really going to go out and show what he can do and show the way he can move. I mean, he did come into Rutgers as a top-rated defensive lineman, so he still should have that burst and that quickness. And he's one of the Floridians out of Col Christopher Columbus High School in Miami. He's 22 years of age, a labor and employment relations major. He had a really good junior year with 13 starts. And he 33 and a half, that's not, not bad for him in terms of his jump. You think back to that uh, junior season, you know, they were eighth fewest in sacks in the nation as a line. They also had a thousand yard rusher. And he was all Big East also, which means that, I mean, he can get it done. I mean, he's going to be the guy that can get it done. I mean, he made that transition from the defensive side of the ball to offensive line. I mean, he can, I think he can play both car, guard positions. He did. They moved and it from right, right guard, guard to, to left guard. guard during the spring. That's I, not easy. And I can even see him playing center because he, he is a smart guy and to be able to make those calls. So I'm interested to see where he ends up this year, you know, going, moving on into the National Football League. You know, he actually lined up in the fullback position in the Wildcat uh, 
at Rutgers. That's too. a big boy at fullback. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I don't but think a linebacker wants to see him coming down on him. His high school coach, Chris Merritt, must have seen something in him way back then because he was a DT in high school and the number 24 prospect out of Florida. So Antoine Lowry, I think he's one of these guys here at 6'4", 310. You know, he's got the body for the NFL, Jamal. He, he definitely has an NFL-ready body. I mean, the biggest thing for him is to go out today, perform well. I mean, offensive linemen, defensive you know, tackles, you're not really looking for the blazing speed. You're looking for their 10, you're looking for their bench press, and you're looking for their broad jump and their vertical jump. Because that really shows their lower body strength and how they can move from a standing position and burst quickly. And that's when you see those, those good guards like Jeremy Zuta. He had a great broad jump. He had a great vertical jump. How they get off the line, how they can get up to the next level, the linebacker level. You know, Antoine weighed in at 329 today. Do you think that's a little bit too high because he was 310 during the regular season? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's too high. It depends on how we test. I mean, if you're a big guy, but you run fast, and there's always a range with, you know, your 40 time, with your broad jump, with your vertical jump. So if you're a big guy, you can move that weight around. I think it's a plus, you know, because the NFL guys are getting bigger and guys are getting stronger. <laughs> what did you start out as when you first came from Rutgers <laughs> uh, to the NFL? What did, what did you weigh in? You know, actually, I was bigger because I was playing defensive end in college, so right. I was 260. Now I play around 255, 250. I mean, so it's a huge difference because, you know, some li different schemes have different size players. You know, if you're a team like the Baltimore Ravens or somebody that runs the ball a lot, you're like a big, beefier offensive line. But if you're a team maybe like the Broncos or New England, that you those are quicker. quicker guys that can get out on routes or even if you throw a lot of screens, guys that can get down the field and, you know, pick up corners and different things like that. So I think different teams, you know, go after different people. I mean, a guy like Antoine being so big, you know, teams that maybe like to pound the ball a lot, the Seahawks or teams like that that run the ball a lot, we'll look for guys like him. That's an interesting philosophy. We saw Andre Civil earlier, and he weighed in uh, 285 during the regular season. A guy like him, do you want to see him perhaps lighter? It depends on the individual player, right? I think it, it depends on what he does. I mean, I think he will get bigger over time. I mean, you have that body now, but I've seen guys come in and they're 285, 280 in the NFL, and they've grown to 300, 315 pounds because it's a different philosophy, and they'll make you into what they want you to be. So now he has to go out there today and you know show the way he moves in the L drill. Can he bend? Can he move around? And that that athletic body is huge now with more teams throwing the ball around, more teams running more wide open system, and that really translates from the college game going into the NFL game because a lot of colleges are doing it now. So the NFL, their, their players are coming from them from those systems. So now they have to use the Great same point. kind of fundamentals. All right, broad jump uh, also going on concurrently, and, and obviously, again, that tests the lower body explosion and the lower body strength. The athlete starts out with a stance balance and then explodes out as far as he can. We've all done that before. It, it tests essentially explosion balance because he has to land without moving. Anthony Facilli is joining us today. Let's check in with Fooch. Bruce, Jamal, how are we doing? Very good, my friend. You know, it's amazing, Bruce, you see all the NFL scouts here, and one time, Jamal worked out here many years ago. They came down here to find a few diamonds in a rough, but now they're coming down here to find some starters, some impact players. You look at the numbers right now, Bruce, 35 guys in the NFL. You look at since 2009, Rutgers is in the top 20 in games started. That's, that's quite an accomplishment. And most importantly, you look at guys like a Cooper from, from Connecticut who was a free agent and he almost was the NFL rookie. He came had a great combine here last year. You look at Gafar Lane, who came in here, uh, I mean, a, a Khalil Glaude, who came in here last year and makes the Tampa Bay roster. He has a great combine, but the real winner last year had to be from Mongolia, Delaware, Deron Harmon, Bruce. Remember his pro day last year? He goes to be a third round draft choice, third round draft choice for the New England Patriots, which was a shock of the draft last year and had a very good season. So these scouts now, Bruce, come down here find some starters and some impact players. That's a good point, Fooch, because last year when you look at what Rutgers accomplished, it was their best ever in terms of overall players selected. Seven players were picked in the draft. That is a, rec a Rutgers record. Uh, and also seven free agents. So you had seven and seven, 14, 14 guys. players that's coming from your team. That's a big number. That is a huge number. I mean, uh, a lot of teams in the NFL, you know, they have guys from all over the place. But if you see, if you see Rutgers, I mean, to have seven guys drafted, 
that's huge for a program like this. And then seven free agents that went out, that made plays, that made teams, that's even bigger because it shows that the guys that weren't, you know, that didn't get drafted, they still have that, that fight and that hunger to be able to go out and make the team. I mean, so I think for Rucker this year, you know, you never know. I mean, there's guys that are under the radar, like Deron last year was under the radar. People were saying late round pick, and he had a great pro day out here and ended up being drafted in the third round to the New England Patriots. So guys today can really make their mark early with how they perform out here. And, and you always hear Bill Belichick say that uh, he loves drafting Rutgers guys. They're extremely well coached, and they also just seem to be knowledgeable and, and, and ready to play the professional game. That's something that you want from your guys, you know? I think it's the way that we handle practice here at Rutgers. I mean, we go out every day and we have an NFL type practice, even from when I was here. The, the practice was run like the NFL. Guys are tough, guys are smart, and guys are adaptable. And with today's NFL, you have to be all three to be able to make it. Here's Robert Jones again, the long snapper. You just saw Dallas Hendrickson a couple moments ago. And this is uh, the long jump, trying to get the, uh, this is really the broad the jump. The broad right? jump. Because it, it, it's broad, you're not moving. You're, you know? you're not moving, but it is huge burst, balance, stance, and be able to maintain that, that balance. I mean, for pass rushes, this is huge. I mean, you want to see guys with a with the, with the 10, 10 or over in the broad jump to be able to, that, that burst off the line of scrimmage to get to the quarterback. So, I mean, so for the outside linebackers and the linebackers and the defensive linemen, this is a huge drill for them to be able to, to show their explosiveness from a standing still. Well, it's great to have Deron Harmon joining us right now. He was a third-round pick last year by the New England Patriots, number 91 overall, and had a very good season. Ended up with 15 games played, 31 tackles, a couple of interceptions. Deron, great to have you with us. Thank you. Great to be here. I appreciate it. When you think about last year, and, and Fooch was just talking about it, People didn't know what to expect from you, and you really excelled. Do you feel this really gave you a great opportunity and, and showed you in a positive light? Uh, I would say so. Uh, it's just a testament that uh, getting invited to the combine and being uh, the guy on everybody draft uh, boards and sites is, is not everything. Um, sometimes it's a team out there that really, really likes you. All you got to do is impress one team, and that's all I want to tell my um, former teammates. All you have to do is impress one team enough to like you, and they'll take you wherever they think they need to take you at. Jamal, what do you think you, about the way he's come around? I mean, it's, it's huge for him, man, because did you have a chip on your shoulder because you weren't invited to the combine last year? Like, how did you feel coming out here that you know that this was your opportunity? Uh, I definitely did have a chip on my shoulder because when you are so competitive enough where you think you're one of the better players in this draft and you're not invited to an event that hosts all of the top players, it makes you angry. And all you can do is think, uh, I got to just keep proving these guys wrong because, you know, coming from Delaware, it's not a not a big hotbed for recruits to play football. So just I've always had the chip on my shoulder. And I think really when not being invited to the combo, I think it raised even to another lot. So I just had to prove my doubt is even wrong even more. Free safety Deron Harmon had an unbelievable game on national television <laughs> against the Broncos. The 34-31 overtime comeback win, 11 tackles in that game. <laughs> and people found out that night how good of a football player you are. Do you think in some ways that, that raised your confidence level? Um, I think what really raised my confidence level was just my teammates starting to garner trust in me. Uh, teammates, coaches, and uh, just telling me that you did a great job out there. Just things like that. It really just picked me up and just let me know that I really do belong because I played well in such a big game, a game that we, we needed at that time and a game that was very important to to the Patriots uh, success this season. So it was definitely something that uh, I just used as uh, help to get my confidence uh, up some more. Did it help a little bit playing with so many Rutgers guys in that secondary? I mean, what do you have, four or five guys <laughs> in a Rutgers secondary? There's a lot of guys. Yeah, I mean, did it help a lot, you know, because they can talk to you in kind of that Rutgers language mm -hmm. that y'all speak when, when you were at Rutgers? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you got somebody like Devin McCourty, an all-pro safety, who's playing the same position as you, who can break stuff down to, like you said, like Rutgers language right. to make it more simpler for me. And then you got a guy like Logan Ryan, who's just a talented rookie corner, who I play with, who I understand, so me and him can talk 
it's like a different language sometimes out in the field because me and him understand each other. So it made the transition a lot easier. You know, the thing about Duran too is he represents Rutgers so well because you were a student athlete. You actually won the Scholar Athlete Award at the banquet. You were a three-time Big East all-academic football player. These are things that we talk about far beyond the football days. What about the Rutgers experience? What did it mean to you? How did it shape you? Um, just being here, it just I, it's a testament to Greg Shannon and Coach Flood. They really turned the 18 year old boy into a, to a man. Like the things that they did, not only on the football field, not only in the uh, the, the the workouts, but like in the classroom, just being a man. Like they helped shape me to be the man I am today. And all I can do is just just thank those guys because I'm not here doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for those guys. And all I can do is show my appreciation to them. You know, look at your stats, too. Four years at Rutgers, 50 games played, 129 tackles, six interceptions. Uh, and yet, Jamal, he was a guy who we didn't think of as being the big-time NFL star. He's what my mom used to say about me intellectually. I'm a late bloomer, and it used to bother me. But, but in some regards, do you think that he came on a little bit late? I mean, it's not about being a late bloomer, early bloomer. It's about blooming, and that's the way that, that's what he did. He maximized his talent, and he's still at the beginning right now. I mean, there's just so much more that you know I can see from him in the years upcoming. I mean, he's going to play a huge role next year with the way they're shuffling their secondary around. So I'm really excited to see where you go next year and how, how good you do because it's not always about where you start, it's about where you finish. I know it's a little cliche, mm -hmm. but in the NFL, I mean, you've seen guys undrafted, drafted late, not supposed to be drafted. And he really went out last year at the pro day and showed, you know, I'm here and I'm here to stay. So if you could walk into that room and talk to these guys before they took part in pro day today, what would your message be? Um, I would just tell them to, to relax, enjoy this process, and don't put too much thought into pro day because at the end of the day, you make the team in the camp, not on pro day, because <laughs> this is all good now in getting teams' attention, but when it comes to strapping on those pads in, in, in August and July, that's how, you, that's how you make the team and that's how you make your money. What about the work ethic? How important was it to you and how important should it be to them? Oh, it was very important. Like you, you sit here and you talk to Logan Ryan. Me and him thought it was important for both of us to do two workouts a day last year in the summer because we felt that we needed to train our bodies at a different level because we wanted to do something that we never done before. So to get different results, you got to do different things. And I think it really prepared our body for when we was transitioning to to the combine training and then just going into the NFL because we was always willing and ready to work and I think it it definitely carried over and helped us uh, get to where we are right now. You're only 23? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you are wise beyond your years, Toronto. It is great to hear you reflecting back and looking ahead. Uh, we wish you a lot of luck with the Patriots. You've only got one year under your belt. Mm -hmm. You've got a great future ahead of you. You're playing for you know one of the best organizations in all of sports, so that's a blessing. And Definitely is. Obviously, Rutgers has impacted you in many ways, so thanks for sharing some thoughts no, with us. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Great job by Deron Harmon uh, from Magnolia, Delaware. Played for the Scarlet Knights from 2009 to 2012, third round pick a year ago. But man, he's got a great future ahead of him after signing a four-year contract with New England. We're gonna share some stats with you and get you up to date on, on what happened in the vertical jump. And here's a look at, uh, Balea did 28 to start. Paul Carazzola, 31 and a half. Brandon Coleman at the combine, combine because he's not participating today except in individual skills drills. 32 and a half there. Jeremy Deering, look at that number. I mean, Jamal. That, that number is huge for him. I mean, that 33. 33.5 is huge for him because, you know, guys don't know about him a lot. He's played so many different positions here on the banks that, you know, where is he going to fit? Is he going to be a receiver? Is he going to be a safety? Is he going to be a corner? You know, is he going to be a running back? I mean, but to show that he can jump that high, show that explosiveness, I mean, I think that's just what's to come for him coming up today in the 40 and in the broad jump and in the L drill. And, and the fact that Deering won the Loyal Knight Award at the team bank would give it to the player whose character and dedication have proved resilient in his pursuit of excellence is exactly what you're talking about. He has played so many positions and he's done it with, with a lot of class along the way. And look at Karan Pratt, 34.5. We knew he was a good athlete overall. Marcus Thompson up there at 33 and a half. And Luke Toller, 
31 and a half. So Thompson's having a great day, but what are your thoughts on, on Pratt's number there, 34 and a half? I mean, that, you know, that shows that he can play anywhere. I mean, he's fast, he's strong, and that shows his strength. So he can play a little bit in the slot also and be a, a kind of a receiver that can play the underneath routes because he's big enough that he can do a little bit of the underneath stuff and play in the slot. And I'll tell you something else about Pratt. This is really important, Jamal. He is a special teams guy. And when pro people look at these players who might be on the bubble in terms of talent, who might not have the perfect position, they say, can you play special teams? How many guys are in the NFL because they're just good at special teams? I mean, I think that's huge. And a lot of these guys today, you know, Rutgers does a good job of their best players play special teams also. And that's huge. When you can see, the, the, the old saying is the more you can do. So if you can play a receiver, you can play a little slot, and maybe you can run down a kickoff. Maybe you can return the ball a little bit. I mean, Jeremy Darren, back in 2011, he, let, he was the fourth in the nation in average for the kickoff and punt return. So you, the more you can do, the better, because it gives you more opportunity to, you know, to make the team. And also for the coaches, they can see you as, OK, man, we can play this guy at receiver. But also, we get the ball in his hands in the kickoff game. He can really get us a couple first downs or score us a touchdown. And you see in these games, look at Trendon Holiday. He's not a huge guy. He wasn't the best receiver, DB, whatever. But when that ball touches his hand, it was lightning. And here's a look at the numbers from the broad jump. And you can see Jeremy Deering leading the way at 10 feet, 6 inches. Not surprising there. Not surprising. I mean, he's an athlete. I mean, where is he going to be used? That's going to remain to be determined. But I mean, he can play safety, he can play defense, he can play receiver, he's played wildcat running back, and in every position he's played, he's had success. So it just depends on where he ends up, what team takes him. And it's interesting to see what drills is he going to do today. Is he going to do the receiver drills? Is he going to do the safety, you know, individual drills? Or is he going to do all of them? So he's going to have a very long and very tiring day today. And, and when you look at guys like the Morels who are bigger guys and they broad nine feet one inch, I think that's very respectable because it's going to be harder for some of these bigger guys to excel in, in an exercise such as that. And you know, you've got to you've got to gauge it, you've got to weigh it accordingly, don't you? Yeah, big guys, you know, you don't jump as far, you don't jump as high, you don't run as fast. But the biggest thing with the broad jump, they are explosive guys, and it kind of matches up to what you see on the field from them. I mean, if they're explosive on the field, then the scouts just come here and kind of look to see how explosive they are from standing still. So there are your final numbers from the broad jump. As we continue along, the next one will be the 40-yard dash. And we're going to bring that live. Let's take a look at, uh, let's go back to Jeremy Deering now and show you uh, how well he did here. Deering, as we mentioned, a defensive back, 41 kickoff returns in his career, and here's his vertical. And he's, he's 23 years of age, he's 6'2", 200, and, and something like this makes you 6'4", six, 6'5", six, yeah, uh, okay? I mean, if he's playing receiver or he's right. playing safety, to jump up and get the ball over a guy is huge, especially in the red zone. I mean, you've seen the plays being made in the playoffs where a guy can go up and sky over to knock down the ball or intercept it. I mean, this is huge to see how high he can jump from a standing position so they can say, okay, he is 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, but he's and, really 6'6". Six, six, yeah. By the way, he can jump. I mean, and receivers are getting bigger and taller, so you need guys in the secondary that are also bigger and taller. Deering selected Rutgers over Florida State on signing day, which was a big move. Remember, he moved from wide receiver to safety during the 2013 spring drills. We've seen him in the Wildcat. We've seen him do a little bit of everything this past year. He had 39 tackles as a free safety. He made 10 starts. And there's the Big E, Eric LeGrand, checking it all out. Of course, Eric was selected by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a, in a great, classy move by Greg Schiano. Uh, the year that he would have graduated. So that was really, you know, a special move and, and reflects the love and affection he has for Eric. And you can't have an event here on the banks without Eric being in the house, can you? I mean, if it's, not, it's not a Rutgers event if Eric's not here. I mean, I know he has a new van outside. If anybody gets the chance, you see him driving around. He has a new van. He got it nicely done. He got it real black rims and everything. So, I mean, I'm excited for him to be here. I'm going to go over and talk to him a little bit later. And, I mean, he loves to come out and, sh and check the guys out to see how they're doing. Because a lot of these guys, we're family. We're brothers. And we've, you know, we've played together. We've known each other. And we love to come out and support each other. And the pro day is just a huge step for the next guys. So, you know, so on, you know, throughout the day, you're going to see guys coming back and just showing that support, that love, and that, that brotherhood that we all have for one another. Was Keith Lumpkin his bodyguard there? What was going on? I think he had two bodyguards <laughs> there. <laughs> Sometimes he needs it, man. Guys love to get a hold of him, love to talk to him, you know, kind of pick his mind. And he's a very inspirational guy. And, I mean, guys just love having him around. Every time he's around, it's a positive thing. He has a smile on his face. And it's just so cool for him to be here today, just showing that support for these guys that he's played with.
Hey, he's one of the most inspirational people that, that I know in my world. And, you know, I, I love him and respect him as a friend in every way. So we're continuing along the first two events, vertical jump and broad jump are complete. We showed you some of those results. We've got the 40 yard dash coming up live in just a couple of minutes. We're going to take a short break here on our vision. I'm Bruce Beck along with Jamal Westerman and Anthony Fusilli bringing you uh, the sights and sounds of Pro Day 2014 right here at the Rutgers practice bubble on the banks. Don't go away. It is, of course, the State University of New Jersey, one of the 10 oldest universities in the country. The Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors voted unanimously to accept the application of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights to join the Big Ten in all sports. It has always been of paramount importance in Big Ten football to win the conference championship. Are assembled in the tunnel and the crowd is coming to its feet. Rutgers, from an athletic standpoint, was a sleeping giant. You'll hear a roar that'll knock pine cones out of trees 50 miles away. Their academic history has always been very good. 40 miles from New York City, a little over 60 miles from Philadelphia, so obviously in a huge population base. For us as a program, the biggest effect right now has been in recruiting. It has given us a definitive streamlined path to the national championship, something I think the players here in the state of Rutgers were craving in the recruiting process. So we've seen that effect immediately. I think the players on our current team are really excited about it. They're excited about playing some teams that have some great tradition in the Big Ten. But most importantly, I think to our players, we'll play anybody, anywhere, anytime. But the access to the national championship, the access to the final four that the Big Ten champion will have, that's probably the most valuable thing to our football program. Touchdown, Indiana! What a run! You grew up in the East Coast and you talk about the best schools that, that you could go to in your area. Rutgers was always there. I think we're both excited about an opportunity to really see what the East Coast is all about. Dives in zone, got it. One man, goodbye. This is one of those games that echo forever. This is a game that reaches across generations that emphasizes the passion of partisanship. This is a game where players make the big play. Rutgers Pro Day continues. Bruce Beck along with Jamal Westerman. Uh, the 2013 draft picks for the Scarlet Knights. Logan Ryan in the third round along with Deron Harmon. Kasim Green in the fourth round going to the Bears. And then four seventh round selections. D.C. Jefferson, Jawan Jameson, Steve Boharness, and Marcus Cooper. So a tremendous year for Rutgers in 2013. If you look at the last 11 years, the Scarlet Knights have 24 players selected. 24, a big number, including three number one picks, Kenny Britt, Anthony Davis, and Devin McCourty. Three number two picks in Ray Rice, L.J. Smith, and Brian Leonard. And four number three, including the two guys last year, Jeremy Zuta and Mohamed Sanu, who we hope to speak to in a little while. All right, we're getting ready for the 40-yard dash. And Jamal, there's so much talk about the 40. You think this is overrated in general, how important it is? Or is this what the scouts, is this what the coaches, is this what it's all about? I think it's position to position. With the bigger guys, the defensive linemen, the outside linebacker types, the offensive linemen, the 40 is great, but it's all about their 10 and 20 yards. Because as a defensive lineman, you're not running 40-yard dash unless somebody's scoring right. a touchdown. Yeah. You know, so it's all about the 10 yards. So they time not only the 40, they also time the 10 and the 20. And the scouts have those numbers to show the guy's burst, the way he gets off the line, how fast he can get to his top speed. But for receivers, corners, I mean, I don't think it's, I think it may be underrated. A guy that is fast, you know, you don't want a guy that's slow. I mean, let's just be real. If you're a slow receiver or a slow corner, it's hard to play in the National Football League. But I think the biggest thing with the 40 where you see, it's all about fast guys run fast and slow guys run slow. I know it sounds, it sounds weird, but what it is is if you see a fast guy go out there and you look at his tape and he's moving on his tape and he goes out and runs slow, 
then you have to reevaluate. Okay, let me check his tape again. Why is he running so slow? But it's a guy that's slower that you see his tape. He may not be as fast, and he goes out there and runs a 4-3. You might change his, his stock. Like He does have the speed. Maybe it's the system he played in, or he was playing with an injury or something like that. So I'm looking for huge numbers today from the guy to really show that you know, I've been working, and it is technique, but it's also after the, the start, it's how fast you can run. The, the description for the 40 is that it's the marquee event at the Combine. It's all about speed, explosion, and watching skilled athletes run great time. Scouts are looking for explosion from a static start. And as Jamal mentioned, athletes are timed at the 10, 20, and 40-yard intervals. Now, Tom Coughlin, head coach of the Giants, sits there by himself at the Combine every year 10 yards out. He really doesn't care about anything else. All he wants to know is what the guy did in the first 10. And then he'll gather the information at the end about the 40 and the 20 and stuff like that. But he wants to see a guy who gets off the ball, who can play for him, and he's got that you know, fiery determination and speed from, like what you said, uh, you know, a quick position. That's huge because it's how fast you can move and how fast you get to the top speed and how fast you can do it. I mean, some guys may build up start guys, so that might be guys that, okay, he, he can't play in the slot or he, he's more of an outside receiver. It takes him a while to get up to his full speed. But for the guys like Justin Tuck rushing off the edge, even Strahan, that 10 to 20 yard interval is huge because how fast you can get the point A to the quarterback. I mean, the quarterback only sets at seven yards, eight yards. How, how fast can you get to your full speed? And coaches, Depending on position, they'll look at they'll weigh different uh, times heavier. Receiver, the 40, defensive outside linebackers, pass rushers, the 10 and the 20. Offensive linemen, the same thing. Because if your offensive lineman running 40 yards, it's either an interception or somebody scored a touchdown, they're running in the end zone to celebrate. Let me tell you something about Usain Bolt, who I've covered the last two Olympics. At 10 meters, he's behind. Right. At 20 meters, he's behind. At 40 meters, he's even. At 60 meters, he's ahead of you by 10 meters. Right. So he's a guy who he may, doesn't get off the fence. At 100 meters, he's, he's beaten he's by, by 20 <laughs> meters. It's unbelievable how quickly he catches up. So a long guy who's tall might not be as quick as Victor Cruz right. off the ball. Santonio Holmes, on the other hand, he's better on a straight dart. You know, I'd rather time him in the 100 than I would in the 40. But certain guys like Cruz are electric, or what, right. Wes Walker's a good example. He's, he's not speedy, I but mean, he's quick. If you look at his 40, Wes Walker might be a 4.7, 4.8 guy, but his 10 to 20, I, I guarantee he's one of the fastest in the NFL. And that's just the way he gets his full speed, he can make those option routes. I mean, he played with two of the best quarterbacks too, but right. the way he gets open, I mean, it's his 10 and his 20 is huge for him. Jerry Rice was never going to win the 100, right. but Jerry Rice was going to win on the football field, and he was going to beat you with smarts and intelligence and running the route the right way. So so that's the way it goes. So Karan Pratt, Jeremy Deering will be guys to watch in this. And Tyler Belia is getting ready right now, so he'll be our first runner. Joe Benke, uh, a kicker, will not be participating in this drill. I don't think it's that important, but, but uh, we wish Joe a lot of luck. Uh, American Athletic Conference All-Academic Team member and also a, a prior member of the Big East All-Academic Team. His brother David is a U.S. Army Ranger, so he comes from a good stock. And by the way, Benke's a heck of a fencer, so if he ever has to go into the <laughs> Olympics, he was a four-year epi fencer in high school. So Tyler Belia will lead us off. This is where you get your last minute instructions, I guess, from the guys administering these drills, right? I mean, the scouts are going to let you know where they want your hand, when to go, what are they going to stop you. You know, sometimes if you watch the combine, they'll blow you dead. Maybe you moved your arm too quickly. Maybe you didn't stay for three seconds. With the 40, most of the time, you get in a three-point stance, your hand is behind the line, and you have to hold that position for a three count before you take off. And that's so all the scouts can be ready and can kind of get your time going. So Nick Marsh, the punter for, for Rutgers, uh, who had 13 starts this year and had a very solid year, the Utah transfer, and Joe Benke will not participate. But Tyler Belia is up first, and this is the 40 at Rutgers Pro Day 2014. Each guy will get two chances. Second time, a chance to improve, and let's watch how he gets out of the gate. And there's Tyler Belia, 6'4", 245, a fifth-year senior, and a pretty good effort from Tyler, who appeared in nine games this past year, made his college debut against Norfolk State, a transfer 
from Wagner College. I mean, he's a big tight end, so it's interesting to see where he ran not only the 40, but also the 20, because tight ends nowadays, they're two different molds. You have the bigger guys who are maybe the blocking tight ends, and then you have the guys that, the, the Graham, who is tall, but he's more of a pass-catching tight end. So it's interesting to see which mold he'll be in. He was 5.08, and now up next is Paul Carrizola, 6'2", 240, fifth-year senior out of Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Big tight end. I'm going to look at how he gets out of the gate because he is a guy who's got some ability. 47 career games, 10 starts, and Carrizola, look at the big guy move. I think he's moving pretty well. He, he looks good out there. He, not only is he a tight end, but he's also played a lot of fullback here also. So that H-back position to be able to do two different things, maybe in the backfield, shift back, move around, being a blocking fullback, or maybe on the line tight end. And the more you can do in the NFL, the better. 4.72, that's pretty good for, uh, for Carrizola, you know. That's huge for him because it shows that he, he has that top end speed to really be able to play tight end, be able to split out and play, you know, a little bit of slot from that tight end position. Andre Civil is up next, 6'3", 285, fifth year senior out of Brooklyn, New York. Offensive tackle, defensive end in high school, played offensive line for the Scarlet Knights. He could play right guard, he could play right tackle, he could do a little bit of everything. He played left tackle in 2011, made 11 starts there. And this is a guy you just would like to see him break. Oh, oh, oh he's got, oh. he pulled up, and it looked like his right hamstring. hamstring. And I was going to say this is an important drill for him, and that, that has to be frustrating because I don't even know if he'll take a second run now. I think he'll go over and talk to the trainers a little bit and see how bad it is. May, maybe a little, just takes a little while to get warmed up, and I'd like to see him, you know, take another try to, if it's not a big injury. He was switched from defensive line to offensive line in 2010 during preseason camp. His first career start was at right tackle. Brandon Coleman, as we mentioned, took part at the combine, so he won't be running today. Up next will be Jeremy Deering. He's going to fly. This is going to be I'm, fun. I mean, he's been running 4-3 in training down at Test, so I, I expect to see high 4-3s, 4-4 four, four from Six, him. 6'2", 200 pounds senior, uh, Jeremy Deering, him. and he can outright fly. He's been a wildcat runner for the Scarlet Knights. He's played defensive back. Uh, he's been a wide receiver, and, and he goes 4-4-3 four, four, here. With a stumble at the first 10 yards, if you notice. So his second time, if he gets this clean, I'm looking for a high 4-3 from him. So a little bit of a stumble. You're right at the start, but Jeremy Deering, who had the interception against Louisville, he had five tackles against Houston, and he's got one more shot. It's going to be fun to see if he can break that 4.4. Here's Nick DePaula, who is a linebacker and have parked in Maryland, fifth-year senior, on the Dean's list, six foot, 210 pounds. You remember his older brother, Andrew, played here at Rutgers as well. He's a tough player, you know, a special teams guy that can go in and make an impact on teams. And, you know, if he has a good day today, he might get into OTAs or a camp somewhere to better show what he can do. 42 games, 30 tackles in his career, and Nick DePaula stretching it out. And as Jamal mentioned, you know, very good on special teams this season. Uh, one of those guys you can depend on. 4.73 for okay. DePaula. Not bad. Remember, he's being looked at as a linebacker, but definitely one of those guys who's got to earn a spot with a special teams uh, uh, role. Definitely. I, mean, I think that's a lot for a lot of guys. If you're not drafted and you're not drafted high, you know, the, what, you can, what you can do on teams, what you can do at different positions is going to help you. And here's Chase Dodd, quarterback for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, senior, six foot 200, trying to stretch it out. And the thing I like most about Chase Dodd is just the way he hung in there. You know, a number of times he played the backup role, but when he was called upon like he was this year, 4-8-3 for Dodd, he really handled himself well. I mean, he could have he could have been a complainer, never was. You know, his first start this year against UConn, you know, he threw for 286 yards, had that big 84-yard reception uh, pass to Karan Pratt. So I like the way that he shows uh, four to two throughout. Here's Dallas Hendrickson, offensive lineman, center for the Scarlet Knights, 6'2", 290, and this fifth year senior, hopefully he's under five. That's important for him. Let's see if that's possible, Jamal. I think he can get under five. And, and, and thing with him, he can play center. I think he can also play both guard positions too, because he does have that size and that bulk, and he will get stronger moving forward. Well, he had a lot of fives, so it was 5.55. It wasn't exactly what we wanted, five. Maybe that was unrealistic. 
Uh, Robert Jones, the long snappers, you take a look at the early results so far. Deering blazing the way at 4.43 to lead the way thus far. There's Hendrickson's 5.55. Good job by our group getting that up quickly. There's long snapper Robert Jones. 51 career games. He never missed the game. He was the Axe Player of the Year. What is exactly does that Axe Player of the Year mean? I mean, you're a tough, resilient guy. You're always on point. And the thing with a long snapper, to have a reliable long snapper in the NFL is huge. A guy that's going to, you know, it, it may be a position that's over, you know, nobody really looks at. To have the ball in their hand every single play when they're needed and when they're called on without a mistake is huge. And he's played four years. He started four complete years at long snapper. And he's going to definitely be in camp somewhere this year and get an opportunity to go out and make a team. 5.12 is. We look at Antoine Lowry, 6'4", 310 offensive lineman, the fifth-year senior from Miami, really stretching it out. He did not make any starts this year, and as Jamal mentioned, last year had 13 starts. So after playing in the East-West Shrine game, he's got to try to impress some people. And he's also at 5.55. So he's got a little bit of an uphill battle. But, right. but he's a big boy. Challenge. But he is a big boy, though. I mean, so guys move differently. And it would be interesting to see what that 10, that 20 was for a guy like him. Because he may not have that endurance to run the complete 40 at full speed. But maybe he got to the 10 or the 20 at, at a quick speed. Here's Jamal Morrell, who blocked seven kicks in his career. This is all about speed, however. 6'4", 220, fifth year senior, linebacker out of Bear, Delaware. Had a very good career at Rutgers with 34 starts and 165 tackles. I mean, it's big for him. I mean, he's gonna be a special teams ace at the next level. But if he runs a good 40 today, you never know. He might sneak in to, you know, the mid round because he's a linebacker, but he's tall, he's ranging, he can cover these tight ends that are so huge today. Pretty good form there, uh, Jamal, as you critique the other Jamal. He's a captain for Rutgers. As a matter of fact, he and his brother Jamil, the first set of brothers to serve as team captains since 1893. You remember Gabe and George Ludlow, right? Yeah, I played with them. That was a good year for us, 1893. 4.64. That's a good time for him because he's so tall to be able to crouch down in that stance and get out. And he's a guy I can say playing outside linebacker, even playing in the box a little bit, covering, like I said earlier, these huge tight ends that are running wild in the NFL now. Here's Jamil Morrell, his, his brother, also a captain for the Scarlet Knights, as we mentioned. 11 games, one start this year on the defensive line. He's 255, fifth year senior, 23 years of age. Let's see how Jamil does. Jamil got off to a very good start. Let's see how he finishes. Head forward, body leaning a little bit. Waiting for. 481 for Jamil. So waiting for the official. It's 4.81 for Jamil Morrell. With these official times also, every scout, what they do, they take the official time, but every scout has their own timer. So different scouts, you know, they've been doing it for 10, 20 years, so they time differently. So some may be a little bit faster or a little bit slower. Don't go out for popcorn right now because this is Karan Pratt, wide receiver, team MVP, six foot 190, fifth year senior. Caught 87 balls in his career. Local product from Palmyra, New Jersey. Let's see if the speedster mm. can make it happen. Looking strong. Mm. How was his start? Oh, the start? You see the way he got out of there, stayed no, low. No, I didn't see oh, it. <laughs> he, was, he was gone. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna, this is a huge day for him because he's such a tough guy, and guys don't give him a lot of credit for his, his toughness you know, and the way he plays. And I think he's going to do a good job playing in the slot with a 4-4-6. That's huge for him so he can run. He can run with the best of them. And, you know, 32 receptions this year. He can play special teams. I mean, today he's really going to put that mark on it. This is who I am, and I, and I can be here. So a strong job by Karan Pratt. Marcus Thompson should run well. He's been having a great day. 27 on the bench press, 10-4 on the broad jump. He's been having a great day and making that transition from defensive end to outside linebacker in the 3-4 defense. Running back, remember, in high school during his senior year, 832 yards. Thompson, head up, running strong as he bursts through the 40. 
I mean, he's a big boy. I mean, he's strong. He's, he's stout against the run, and it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up. Does he end up playing DN? Does he end up playing 4 five, seven? It's huge for, a for guy, him. For a guy 260? 260. To be able to move that mass around is big, so he can show that he can get out and maybe cover some guys playing outside linebacker in that 3-4 defense. And here's Lou Toller now to finish up this 40 in the first round, a fifth-year senior, 5'11", 190 pounds out of Newcastle, Delaware, a transfer from Western Michigan. He was uh, enrolled in the Rutgers Masters program, immediately eligible after transferring to Rutgers. And let's see what number 24 can do here. He had 10 tackles against Eastern Michigan. See if he can tack one on here. And he looks good. Oh, he's moving. Lou Toller getting out of the gate and finishing strong. I don't know if he finished as strong as he started, but he, he might have had a great number for the first 10 yards. Uh, Four, five, six. So a good showing for Lou Toller. Again, it's rel relative to your position. You want to see the numbers as low as possible. If you're a DB, a wide out, a right. running back, uh, that's what made that, that last run by, by Marcus Thompson at 4.57. That might have been the most impressive of the round considering he's 260 and a defensive lineman. 260 pounds. I mean, he's strong in the bench press. He was good on the broad jump. I mean, scouts are really going to take a look at him, the way he's running, as fast as he's running. That's uh, Malcolm Bush, former Rutgers tight end, now at Delaware. And, and part of the, the beauty of Rutgers Pro Day is guys are invited back who right. have had a part in the Rutgers program over the years. And Greg, Greg Schiano started it, and uh, you know Kyle Flood does the same thing. I, I think it's a great, great thing to see someone who's from the area right. who came through the Rutgers program and he gets a chance to you know take part. I, I think it's a beautiful thing that guys are able to come back, guys that. May, may have left for one reason or another. You know, they've gone other places. Malcolm Bush went to Delaware, had a great career there. Be able to come back because he loves Rutgers. He loves the guys here. And Coach Flood gives guys the opportunities from the area to be able to come back and get in front of the scouts also because they did commit to Rutgers at one time. It's kind of a way Coach Flood kind of gives back to the guys in the state of New Jersey. They better come back and show what they can do in front of you know the scouts here to see the Rutgers guys. No question. And here's Lou Toller, 4.56. We talked about Karan Pratt. Uh, Pratt finishes up at 4.46. Marcus Thompson, real impressive, as we mentioned, at 4.57. Antoine Lowry ended up at 5.55, but again, he's a big guy. Uh, I think Jamal Morell at 4.64 is very good. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it's interesting to see what these guys do in their second four. A lot of guys kind of use that first one to fill it out, so if somebody may have stumbled. The second one is where it's the most important because it's the last one of the day. So really, this is the what you put the stamp on the 40, you know. So hopefully we'll see a guy like Darren, you know, he's not going to stumble. He's going to come out and run that 4-3. Or anybody that may have maybe I should have, you know, stayed lower or came out faster. And the second one is huge because, you know, you can hope to improve in that time you just ran. Jamal Westerman providing us our color commentary today. He had 26 sacks at Rutgers, third all time. I'd love to watch the big, the big man from Brampton, Ontario, explode and go get a quarterback. Here's a look at Deering now. Let's see if there was a little slip here, Jamal. This is the first run for him. We're showing it again. You see yep, right there? That's where it was. You're right, on the, about on the three-yard line. Third, the third step, he stumbled a little bit, and he still ran a 4-4. I picture if he comes out cleanly. I mean, he's been running 4-3 and training down at Test, so he's definitely, I'm looking for a high 4-3 from him because he can do it. I mean, he's such an athlete. He's so quick. I mean, that's why he was able to play so many different positions and be successful. And so we'll see what the NFL guys want him at. Do they want a receiver? Do they want a kick returner? I'm not Maybe sure. It safety. might depend on the it, team. It, it depends. Team to team want different things. I mean, he can, it's kind of a tweener, but now in the NFL you see a lot of guys that are tweeners are the guys people are looking for. Maybe a defensive lineman that can also stand up in coverage. Maybe a safety that, a big safety maybe a little linebacker, he can play a little bit nickel now, covering the tight end, covering running backs out the backfield. Well, you were a tweener, you were a, a DE and, and an right. outside linebacker. Right. And so may, being able to do both helped me because I was strong enough to be stout against the run, but also I was agile enough to be able to cover guys and get after the quarterback. So tweeners, just the, the game is going more passing game. So those guys that are maybe not big enough to play linebacker, but not small enough or fast enough to play safety, uh, before it's like, where are you going to play? But now, 
You can, I mean, you can definitely play on special teams. You can cover the tight end. You can cover running backs in the backfield, cover guys in the slot. So tweener now, is, it used to be a bad thing, but now it's turning into a good thing. You can get after the quarterback and you can play the run. I mean, who doesn't want that? You know, the scouts have to be here because you wanted to see not just Deering's number, but the fact that he did indeed have a little bit of a stumble and there, he it. it makes it more impressive when you look at the 4.46. You see it on paper, say, oh, that, what did Deering do? I really want him to be a 4-4 guy. Right. But if you're here, you go, no, no, no. You call back and right. say, that was really impressive. First of all, he gathered himself and, and he, finished strong. Second of all, the number is impressive when you consider that he had a little bit of a bobble. To be able to stumble like that and still run the 4 fourth and finish, it just shows that, you know what, I know I stumbled, but I'm going to finish this drill, and my second fourth is going to be much better than the first one I just did. I, I've stumbled plenty, by the way, during this, uh, <laughs> this broadcast. Let's go to Anthony Facilli uh, for some comments. He's over by the 40. Anthony? You know, Bruce, the thing, and Jamal, it I enjoy seeing all the current Rutgers football players right now who are watching these guys work out. It's like you did, Jamal, dreaming about this day, next year, or the following year. And a guy who deserves a lot of credit is the strength and conditioning coach, Jeremy Cole, because some of the guys here could look fabulous. I haven't seen him in three months, but you see like a Steve Longa up to 230 pounds, linebacker who was a freshman, you know, uh, sensation last year for Rutgers. And you see what some of these have turned into and you know him pretty well. Jeremy. Oh. I, I think Fuchs's point is, is well taken, that guys look different and they're ready to go. And here it's back for the second round, now the 40. Thank you, Anthony. Here's Tyler Belia, the tight end, who's up first. Played three years at Clarkstown North High School after transferring uh, his final year to Paramus Catholic. Baseball, basketball, football player, very good athlete overall, and and Tyler trying to finish strong. Now here's a guy who didn't, you know, make any catches this year, but he's somebody who's just trying to get a free agent opportunity. Right. And the, the thing about the pro day, I always tell guys, no matter how much you played as a senior, how much you didn't play, how good you played, didn't, it's your final opportunity to go out there and show the scouts what you have. And you never know, you might end up on a team with an opportunity. That's the thing, the opportunity to go out and make a team. Tyler Bullia went from 5.08 to 5.06. And now Paul Carazzola, his first uh, run was 4.72. Had the touchdown catch against Arkansas back in 2012 in the Scarlet Knights victory. And Carazzola, who played fullback and can do a little bit of everything, high school tight end and defensive end, was one of the top 33 players in the state of Pennsylvania at Neshaminy High School. And he went 4.72 in his first run, and this was even better. Sorry, 4.77, not quite as good. So that's, that's, that's still a good showing from him. And I think what, what you said earlier about the guys coming back looking better, I think Coach Cole, the strength coach at Rutgers, does a great job of kind of putting that fundamental, that base. I've seen guys at Rutgers, they come back and like, man, how'd you get so big? How'd you get so strong? But they really, now you can lock in them to running. Now you can lock into working out. Here's Jeremy Deering now. Let's watch the start. 4.43 with a stumble in his first 40-yard attempt. Taking a lot of time. Good clean start this time for Deering. Let's see if he finishes strong. You think he was a little bit tentative for the first 10 yards or no? He kind of sat at the line a little bit longer. They're screaming here. 4-3-7. Uh, what did I, what, what I tell you? you know, High 4 threes. I, I heard, I heard the, the, the howling in the background. 4-3-7. <laughs> that's, that's impressive for Jeremy Deering. So no stumble, and he was even cautious. Uh, and if you see, at the combine, the fastest time for a safety was a 4-4-2. So he's even faster than all the safeties at the combine this year. Nick DePaula is up next. His first first round was 4.73. Had 1,600 yards rushing and 14 touchdowns his senior year at Hereford High School in Park, Parkton, Maryland. And DePaula, another Dean's List guy. And with that hair flying around, it looks like he's running pretty hard. Hey, that hair makes you look like you're moving. I mean, the biggest thing for the second 
The second one for these guys is that they stick to their technique, that they stick to their, you know, what, what got them here. You know, sometimes if you want to run faster, you might run harder, which, you know, takes off your technique, which messes up your start. And he, he improved this time a 4.73 to a 4.68. That's huge for him. You can tell the second one, he was a little bit smoother, you know, a little bit more confident. And just came out and, you know, got off that line and got there. Good job by Nick DePaula. Now Chase Dodd trying to improve on his 4.83 showing in his first attempt at the 40. Again, he's a quarterback. He's not being looked at for right. pure speed, but it's being in shape, having the effort, trying to show some good form, the commitment. A lot of those and, things play in. And I think with quarterbacks, maybe not the 40 is a big thing, but how athletic you are. Are you able to move around in that pocket? Are you able to, you know, defeat the blitz, you move your feet. I mean, look at a guy like, you know, Johnny Manziel, you know, the way he moves around the pocket. I mean, he did run a fast 40, but it's, can you move and can you get away and can you have that pocket awareness? I'd it's like to know what his time is from one side of the field to the other. Oh, man, and back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and back That's again. where you judge it. His, his, his amazing, uh, you know, ability to change directions as you look at Dallas Hendrickson. By the way, Chase Dodd improved from 4.83 to 4.78. And now Dallas Hendrickson trying to improve in the 5.55. 563, five, so not as good as showing for Dallas, who won the David Bender Trophy as the program's top offensive lineman at the team banquet this year. With, with offensive linemen, it's about the drills out here. I mean, Jeremy Zuta, you know, um, Lowry, you know, these offensive linemen, you know, AD, they came out and when the offensive linemen coach, Offensive line coaches love to get their hands on their players. So you're going to see them out here moving around in these drills, how they pull, you know, can they get down in their stands, how they explode off the ball, you know, hitting the pad. So really, the 40 is not, I mean, I would like to see it's 10 and maybe it's 20, but the 40 for an offensive lineman is, is really non existent. Now, it's funny, you look at Robert Jones, it looks like he's exerting more energy and putting forth more effort than anyone. And he went from 5.12 to 5.03, so maybe I was onto something there. Yeah. Hey, you got to push a little harder in the second one. Here's a look at the numbers. Jeremy Deering going from 4.43 to 4.37. That's by far the most impressive. It would have been the fastest time at the combine this year. The really? Four, three, for a safety, that would have been the fastest time because the fastest time was the 4.42. So this year, he would have ran the fastest time at the NFL combine. That's tremendous. So a great showing by Jeremy Deering. The guy that had the best time overall there was Dry Archer of Kent State, 4.26 as a running back. Right. So he was pretty close to that. And it's Lowry. Uh, Antoine goes to 5.58 from 5.55, so pretty consistent. No real improvement there. Here's a guy we want to watch again. This is Jamal Morrell, who had a 4.64, a linebacker who's who's nicely built at 6'4", 220, who, as we mentioned, can do everything in terms of right. special teams with seven block kicks in his career, 34 starts, three I mean, interceptions, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries. I mean, he's a guy that can come in right away and play on the team. I mean, he's blocked seven kicks throughout his career. He's a rangy guy. He's a, you know, you can say he's a tweener because he's not as big as some of the guys, but he's tall. So he's a guy a coach can say, look at him and say, we can put him right in on special teams and play him as a, as a rookie. Give me a 4.60 or better. Let's see. Going to be tough to better that 4.64. Morell didn't have a great start, but he finished extremely well. Four six five, okay, so pretty so consistent. Still good times for him. Four six four and four six five. He, he's a taller guy too, so it's not only your your size but your length. You know how can can he get down in that three point stance and how he explodes out. So I think those are very good times for him and you know what he's doing today. Up next, Jamil Morrell. I remember that play against Temple where he stripped the quarterback and Kasim Green picked it up in 2012 and returned it for a touchdown. He made those type of plays, especially back in 2012. Popped up a little bit. And Jamil Morrell looking very determined in his effort in the 40. A labor and employment relations major.
four seven eight, so he improves from four eight one. Well, that's a solid time for a guy like him making that transition from defensive end to outside linebacker. That's definitely a solid time for him, and you know he's been working hard. So it's interesting to see what he's going to do not only in the forty, but in those shuttle drills to show the way his body can bend and move, and to show his burst off that line. Here's Karan Pratt, four point four six in his first attempt. Again, he's got the ability. In 2013, also was a part of special teams. Five catches against mm. Cincy, five catches against Temple. And look at Karan Pratt the, get out. The way he burst off that line is amazing. I mean, he goes from, I, I, I want to see what his project was. He goes from a, a, a stopped until that 10 yards is so quick. So it'll be interesting to see what his 10 and 20 was too. And that mold like a, you don't want to say a Wes Welker. I mean, a 4-4-3, I mean, he improved his time from a 4-4-6, which is good for him. And his 10 and his 20, I guarantee, is a lot faster than what you think his, his 40 is. Because the way he gets to that 10 yard line, I mean, that's amazing. He had a 99 yard kickoff return against Eastern Michigan. That was his first career kickoff return. That's good stuff. Here's Marcus Thompson, 4.57 in his first attempt. Very good for a defensive lineman. Can he do better than that? Thompson, excellent start. Good explosion. Finishing strong. Marcus Thompson from Oakland Park, Florida. 11 starts last year and a 4.60, so pretty consistent. Yeah, the fastest, I mean, his 4.57 is going to stand, you know, and the fastest time of a D lineman at the combine was a 4.53, so he's right in that range to be, if he was at the combine, he'll be a top five performer. He shared team defensive MVP honors with Steve Longa this year. Longa is back, three linebackers, very good, all back for Rutgers next year. So Kyle Flood's got to be happy about that. Now Lou Toller looking to finish this group. So Lou Toller, last guy up. Newcastle, Delaware, his first time was 4.56. And Toller, another good run for him. 4.50 for Lou Toller. Well done. So that completes the coverage of the 40. You got to see it live here in our vision. Here's the final results. We mentioned some really good numbers for different players, including Jeremy Deering scorching out to a 4.37. I don't know if his nickname is the Roadrunner yet, Man, but, but he, he was moving. impressive. He was moving. Overall, did you like these times? Uh, Pratt ran a good time. Darren ran a good time. Marcus Thompson. I mean, that 4.57 is huge. The Twins, their times are very solid for their positions that they're going into, you know, outside linebacker, linebacker, defensive end. So, I mean, guys today really showed, you know, that they've been working hard and, and it's not over yet. You know, and some guys, the 40 is more important. Some guys, the 10 is more important. The scouts, you know, they'll kind of take all the numbers. They'll get together. They'll create a kind of an average of what they ran between their first and their second. And every scout will keep their own time also. Well, the next event will be the 20-yard shuttle, but we're going to take a little time out and talk to Mohamed Sanu of the Cincinnati Bengals. Welcome back, Mohamed. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. It's, it's always a pleasure to see you and to get some perspective from you and uh, what Pro Day is all about and, and what these guys uh, are feeling today. It's always a pleasure to come back and just chat with you because you're just a great person to be around. Thank you, Mohammed. I feel the same way about you. First of all, what about your Rutgers experience? What has it meant to you in your professional career as you continue to, to improve? Well, you know, you learn a lot of, you know, family-oriented things and how to be a player and how to, you know, adjust through, you know, hard times and tough times and, you know, progress through hard, tough situations. And, and, you know, I've learned how to, to handle those tough times and those tough situations and get better as a player on and off the field. And you had a heck of a year this past year, 47 grabs, 455 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Did you feel good about uh, the way you came out this year? Uh, I felt all right with it. Uh, I didn't play the way, you know, I wanted to. And, you know, I, I was a little disappointed in myself. But, you know, there's always, you know, room for improvement this year. And I'm going to, you know, take advantage of it. How did it feel? You're a guy that kind of did the combining, but you also came and ran into pro day. When you came back to the pro, I mean, your numbers were a much improvement over what you did at the combine. How did it feel being around the guys and kind of running in front of the guys that are cheering you on? Oh, it felt a lot better because you, you're around your family. You're around the guys that you, you, you grew up with for the past three or four years. And, and you guys, you know, know each other well. And this is your home. You know the surroundings. You know what to expect. And I had a lot more rest than I did when I was at the combine. 
Well, the Bengals lost to San Diego in the wild card round, but you know, overall, I look at your football team, and I see Andy Dalton, and I see a lot of talent. Was it a good experience this year or not? It was a great experience this year. We uh, had a lot to look forward to. We did a lot of great things, and we had our ups and downs, but we played well throughout the year. We played a lot of great teams, and we fought a lot of hard battles, and some we came on top, some we didn't, but you know, we, we were able to, to have a successful year. You know, Jamal was talking earlier about these guys that are versatile, that can do a lot of things. And at Rutgers, you were versatile. You, you ran the Wildcat. You were a wide out. You did, you did a multitude of things. You caught passes. You threw passes. Do you think that... Do a touchdown. <laughs> that's right. The more that you could... I remember that game at St. Petersburg. You were, you were unbelievable. You did everything. What do you think in terms of, you know, being versatile and being able to be a part of special teams and being able to do a lot of things will that help these guys oh definitely it's a big part to help these guys because you know the more you can do the more valuable you are to a team to able you know help them improve and be an asset to, to the gm to the offense defense special team wherever you know you are so you got to be versatile in this business at your pro day at the end of the pro day, how did you feel that you knew it was over it was kind of kind of folded one chapter and you kind of relax. How did that make you feel? It felt great because it's like finally, you know, I get time to just relax and just, you know, meet with teams and just, just wait for a draft day because, you know, everything leading up to, you know, combine prone day is just work, 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 suspense, right. suspense, suspense, and, you know, anxiety and, you know, being anxious to, you know, to perform. I think about the numbers for Mohamed Sanu, and, and the one that jumps out is 115 catches in a season, a Rutgers and Big East record. But then you look at the numbers for your career, Mohamed, 210. What about your days in the banks? How do you look back upon this? I had some great times here. I had some great years here, and you know I, I'll always love being here. This is a great place, and you know I grew up around here, so I always got to love home. But we always talk about our family. What has it meant to you? Uh, it's meant a lot because, you know, I was, I was a big part of this family and family done a lot of things for me and I did a lot of things for them. So, you know, the love here is mutual. Is that why you continue to come back to the pro day to different events at Rutgers? Uh, definitely, because we, we have a great relationship with, you know, all the coaches and the staff and, you know, the people that are, you know, affiliated with Rutgers. And, you know, you got to keep that, that, that relationship going. Well, the young man from South Brunswick, I mean, this is this is home to you, right? This is this is always home, and it will always be home. So, Mohammed, it's great to see you. We wish you more success in your pro career, but we also admire all the things that you've accomplished with your life outside of football and the way you, you command yourself, the comportment that you show. That's a lot to be proud of. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate you. That's Mohammed Sanu, and Mohammed, you're going to watch this with us as Jeremy Deering gets another shot. At the at the forty because he okay. had that stumble. He stumbled okay. the first one. Oh, the second cool. one he ran a four three seven. So right. we're going to so, see can he improve on that four three seven? I don't know. What do, you, what do you think, Muhammad? I think he can. You know, Jeremy he's an explosive kid and he's very talented. Okay, so it's Deering, Pratt, and Thompson all getting another shot. I think this is a replay. I think he's going too I slow was about here. To yeah. Say, yeah. <laughs> no way. I don't think that's a four three. Slow. That's, Did you like the way I picked it up, Muhammad? That's my years of experience <laughs> being on television. I yeah. thought he was running a little bit slow in that acceleration. Just just a little bit. Not 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 the same as he normally does. Okay, so he ran a four three three in his yeah. final one. Oh. We, we didn't have that one for you, but four three three. You should have showed that one. I mean, yeah. that, that four three one. seven oh, wow. to a four three three. That is good. Four three three. So good stuff for Jeremy Deering. And and I look at these numbers, Mohammed and, and Jamal even mentioned this. It's it's not all about the numbers when you go to these NFL camps. Mm -hmm. It's about showing what you can do. Exactly. <laughs> It's about performing, showing, showing how well you can play the game and how well you'll be able to contribute to the team. All right, we'll take a short break. We'll come back with much more here on Rutgers Pro Day. Great to have Mohamed Sanu in the house. If, he sh if we showed his highlight, he would have been blazing <laughs> there, not in slow motion. Uh, we'll be back with much more. Don't go away. I'm Marcus Haberfield from Wikiwatcha, Florida. Exactly. Went to Wikiwatcha High School yeah, and I played great, offensive uh, line. When I was being recruited, the main thing I wanted was a family atmosphere, and that's exactly what they had here. Hey. I'm all about family. Girl. Once I stepped on campus in the summer on my official visit, and when I got here, I was like, this is the right place for me. It wasn't no recruiting schemes, nothing like that. It was all the core and the beliefs that I fell into, and I want to be a part of the Rutgers program, and now I am, and I'm extremely happy. Logan Lister, Katy, Texas, Katy High School, tight end. It feels good I get to represent my hometown so far away. 
I definitely like the family atmosphere. Uh, I mean, be able to play tight end for sure and be able to play in the Big Ten. Cam Lott played defensive back from Jacksonville, Florida, first coach high school. Fans-wise, when I came here on my official, the, the, the turnout was great. So I know they got a good family atmosphere. The, the fans support them. Everybody support Rutgers football. I'm a hard worker. I, I bring that to the team. I'm excited just, uh, just playing in a bit, 10, saying how much of a family Rutgers is. And when I finally came on my visit and I got to see it for myself, how much, how much the players bond with each other, that probably was the turning point of why I chose Rutgers. I'm Brandon Russell. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I play linebacker. we in New York around about 45 minutes from here. Education, definitely. Um, I actually had two uncles that went to the school and they've told me nothing but great things. Everybody's um, welcoming and warm, so just a hardworking guy who likes to work. Love football, I've been playing it all my life. And as soon as I got the offer, you know, I couldn't resist. My name is Eric Wiafi. I'm from uh, Egg Harbor Township, and I play D-line. I chose to play football here at Rutgers because I feel like his home is near is in New Jersey, and you know I feel like it's a great opportunity. And we're going in the Big Ten. So. And my parents get to watch games now because it's close. You know I got my grandma here, and then um, also like I got a lot of hometown support. You know a lot. Of, I know a lot of people in New Jersey, so that's also going to help. Rutgers Pro Day continues from the bubble uh, right here on campus in Piscataway. Bruce Beckler, Jamal Westerman, and Logan Ryan now joins us. 2013 third round pick for, of course, the Patriots. And what a year he had with 16 games played, 35 tackles, uh, five picks overall. Logan, great to have you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. What kind of year was it for you? I mean, I don't know what was expected. You were the 83rd overall selection, yeah. and you really exceeded all expectations. Yeah, you know, I always have high expectations of myself. You know, I don't really worry about what people expect of me, and I think it was a year where I got an opportunity here and there, and I made the most of it, and the opportunities continued to come, and we had a lot of fun. We won a lot of games. Did it make it a little easier that so many Rutgers drug guys were drafted to the Patriots with you? So you had guys that you've been with for the – you know, the four years that came in the same system with you. How, how much of a transition did it make that a little easier? Yeah, it was a huge transition because when I came into Rutgers, I camped with Devin McCourty. So that, I mean, and he was a great player at that time and I was just learning the game. And now when I come into New England, he's still there and he's a captain of the team, a captain of the defense. And then I also come in with Deron Harmon among many other of my classmates and just, just having uh, Devin and Deron partake, uh, in particular, just with the DBs, we were always talking about scheme while we were eating lunch. And it was just casual conversation, so it was just a lot easier to pick up the playbook and just, you know, have fun at the same time. In week seven, you returned that interception for a touchdown against the Jets. Yeah. And people now know that Logan Ryan is going to beat the Jets. And you talk about that rivalry, it's pretty intense, right? Yeah, it is an intense rivalry. And I didn't know how intense it was until I got there. And, and we definitely knew, you know, the Jets are a huge rival. And, you know, every game in the NFL is a big game. Uh, especially in New England, so uh, we approach it like any other, but there's definitely uh, an intensity you can tell on the field. You're one of the guys that went out last year, you did the combine, you came to pro that you didn't do any of the, the testing, but you did do the drill. How can a guy like Coleman, how is that going to help him just to be able to come out here and just do the, the position drills? Yeah, because you get to focus on football again. I feel like a lot of, a lot of these combine drills, they're important because they stack you up to players who did them previously, but they're not that important to football. There's not too many times that Coleman or myself are going to run with our hand in the dirt in a, a three-point start. So I think it gives Coleman an opportunity to work on his craft, work on his route running, work on his hands, and really show these guys at 6'6 how crisp a route runner he actually is. Your Rutgers years, 2010 to 2012, 37 games, 170 tackles, seven interceptions. What was the Rutgers experience like? It was a lot of fun, man. I felt like my years were special here, and I felt like we had a special team, a special defense in particular last year. And, uh, you know, we look back at it now. You really don't understand how much you're going to miss. I know it's cliche, but how much you miss that time in the locker room and now just seeing guys who are having old stories come back up. And it's just a lot of fun, and it definitely got us all prepared for the NFL, but we all push each other as well. So we're all texting each other during the year and just wishing each other the best of luck. Earlier, Deron talked about how y'all worked out in the off season, how y'all working out two times. How did Coach Cole, the strength coach here, help, help you kind of prepare for the NFL physically? I mean, physically, I don't think you can get any more prepared than what Coach Cole did. Um, 
he takes the idea of toughness to the next level and workouts that we do in the NFL, we're like, oh yeah, we did stuff like this back in college when we were 18, 19 years old. So, you know, just being able to say, okay, I've done this before, this isn't that bad, you attack it. And I think Coach Cole is all about teaching a, a mentality and you got to attack things. You can't let them, you know, make the most of you. You got to make the most of them. So it's something that me and Duran and a lot of guys, you know, take carry over and, it's, you know, it's doing as well. We always talk about Rutgers recruiting the state of New Jersey. Yep. You're a Berlin, New Jersey guy, so you yep. stayed home. What would you say to other recruits that are looking at Rutgers as a potential landing spot? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer. I made a decision. I was a four-star uh, recruit, and I stayed home. And, you know, that was a dream come true to me. It was everything I thought it could be and more because – you can not only develop as a, as a prospect, you, you're putting out as many NFL prospects as any other school, if not more. And there might be more Rutgers DBs in the NFL right now in particular than probably almost any other school. I'm sure it's up there. So it doesn't matter where you go anymore. You don't need to go out of state to, to, to win or, or anything like that. If all the guys stayed home, you could do something special, kind of like what we did, and, and even more. So I think it's, um, you know, I'm a big family guy, and i got to have my family come up. My dad's here now. So, you know, back at Pro Day with me. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun to do it with the guys I played high school ball with as well. How excited are you to see Rutgers making that move into the Big Ten next year? I mean, I know you won't get to watch a lot of the yeah. games live, but how excited are you for Coach Flood and, you know, the entire Rutgers community? I'm extremely excited. You know, the Big Ten's a great conference. There's, there's a lot of great competition. And if that's what guys need, you know, to come to this school and, and they want to play on the highest stage, well, now we're, you know, now we're there. Now we're playing against great competition that NFL scouts can say you line up a good, against a good team and a good player each and every day. And, you know, I wish they'd done it when I was there, so I had that chance. <laughs> we all but, uh, <laughs> It raises but, the stature in, in a big way, and it's, it's an amazing thing. When you think about Penn State and Michigan and Wisconsin coming into High Point Solution right. Stadium and then going to play at Ohio State, I mean, what that's going to do for the recruiting process and for just the overall uh, perception of Rutgers as an institution, I think it's, you know, awesome. I think it is, too. It, it can only help. The, you know, and I think the program is ready. I think it's been built up, and I think it's starting to get that national attention. People know, you know, what it is now. But um, you know, that competition week in and week out, I think it's going to be great for the fans as well. All right, Logan. Finally, I think you know people just want to know about, you know, the relationships you built here. We always talk about them. You were the Axe Player of the Year, right? Yeah. So it talks about not only the way you play the football field, but I think it talks about your commitment and your work ethic. So let's just end this with what would you say to these guys if you have a chance later? Because they've got a couple of months now or maybe six weeks before the NFL draft. They can still make a lot of what they yeah. are. What would you tell them to do? I would tell them to keep working. You know, today is a great day to show what you've been doing. You know, take a couple of days or a week off to rest your legs. But I took this time last year to prepare to play as a rookie. I know a lot of guys want to rest up before the draft, but you need to come in and get ready to compete for a spot. So I would just say continue to work on your craft, continue to work and be ready to take somebody's spot or be ready to compete at the highest level, at a professional level, because that opportunity is going to come and you want to be ready for it. Logan Ryan of the New England Patriots. I remember that big interception in the end zone against Arkansas, right? Yeah. There are certain things that stick yeah. out in your mind. You made a lot of big plays at Rutgers, and I know you're going to make even more big plays in the NFL. Thanks for joining us, and we wish you the best. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. All right, we're going to take a short break, and more coming up on Pro Day uh, in just a moment as we continue talking Rutgers football and the future for many of these young men. Don't go away.
This is Rutgers Pro Day 2014. Bruce Beck and Jamal Wester. Well, you like this stuff or not? I, I mean, it's, it's fun. You know, I'm trying to take your key and try to work it out a little bit. So I'm having a good time out here. And it's excited to see guys come back. You know, I came back and spoke on the show before. And it's exciting seeing Logan and, you know, Sanu and everybody like that come back. So, I mean, it's been a blessing. It's been fun. And you know, I'm interested to see what everybody does and, you know, and their shuttle drills coming up. These guys represent the institution extremely well, don't they? They really represent Rutgers in a class way, and to see them come back, uh, it, it only you know really puts this program in a, in a, I think, a greater light. I think the thing with Rutgers is you're always great, not only great players on the field, but great people. And these guys come back. I mean, they come back to this. They come back to the spring game. You know, they go to each other's charities. I mean, we've been to each other's, you know, little events and charity events. And there's really great people that's in the program now, you know, from the head coach on down. And I'm excited to see them move into the Big Ten to kind of show the nation what Rutgers is about and what kind of people and what kind of men we're, build, we're building here. We want to show that, that last run by Jeremy Deering in the 40. He ended up 4.33. You think about it, each time he improved, he had the stumble in the first 40, improved in the second, and then the third, he was just lights out. So what, what would have happened if you got another chance of running? <laughs> he, would be, he would be down to 4.00 if we stayed here for another week. All right, we've got the 20-yard shuttle and the three-cone drill going on. The 20-yard shuttle is the first of the cone drills. It's known as 5-10-5. It tests an athlete's lateral quickness and explosion in short areas. The three-cone drill tests an athlete's ability to change directions at a high speed. Three cones in like an L shape. The athletes start and then go five yards to the first cone and back. Uh, what do you think in terms of uh, here you look at Deering doing this drill? What the, about these uh, these drills? I think in the, in the three cone drill, he's going to be right. the best by far. I think with these drills, they're more football specific. So it's can you change direction, your lateral quickness, your birth? I mean, especially with the L drill, it really shows something like ankle mobility, how you bend the corner. So as a guy that's a pass rusher or a receiver coming out of his break or a running back, if they're good in this, they're normally good football players because they're, they can move, they can bend, they can change direction, and they're flexible. And that's things that scouts really look for. If a guy is a, if runs a fast 40 but does a bad job in maybe something like the L drill, maybe he's not flexible. Maybe he can't, his ankle mobility is, is not up to par. You know, maybe he can't bend. So these drills really show scout, how does this guy move in a short, short area? How can he move? How can he bend? You know, pass rushes is huge. Somebody like Jadavion Clowney, Marcus Thompson, these guys, this is the drill that's really going to kind of put them on top to say, look, I can bend the corner. I can change direction. I can go from a stop to a burst to changing the direction. That's what football is all about, the way you change direction and the way you move your body around. Yeah, see, that's real. It's more specific. Right. And, and Karan Pratt in the three-cone drill went 6.75. Just to give you an idea, at the combine, Daniel Sorensen of BYU had the best time. He's a safety, 6.47. So that's not that far off. I mean, it, I mean, it is, but it's not. But the fastest time of the receiver was 6.53. So really, you got to match, measure. You gotta ma match them up against their position group. I mean, you can't match up a defensive tackle against a receiver. You can't match up a receiver, even against a smaller, maybe running back or a smaller corner. So the best to match up guys between their position group and their, their size in their position group. Like you're, gonna, you're not going to match, match up Coleman with Pratt, because one six is one one's not. Yeah. You know, so it's really you kind of look at the average and the size weight and then look at their numbers. And that's the best way to really match guys up to see how they did against, you know, everybody coming out this year. Change of direction is so important in these drills. As you look at some of the numbers from the, from the cone drill, this is the three cone drill. Again, uh, Jamal mentioned, you know, that, that 6.78 right there for Deering and the 6.78 for Chase Dot. See, that's a surprising number. Look at that. But that's impressive for a quarterback. I mean, because he's quick in a short area. He can avoid the rush. He can get out the pocket. He can roll out, you know. And, and the 40, like I said, is not huge for a certain position. But for a quarterback, you know, their shuttle is big. I mean, even Flacco, a guy that maybe guys look at as a, a big guy, he doesn't move a lot. But his, his three cone and his shuttle drill was very fast at the combine. I don't think Eli would have done well, though, in this, in this drill. It doesn't matter. Now, he, he, he'll do good if somebody's grabbing on him and he's throwing a touchdown pass or a Super Bowl winning catch yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. I think that goes a long way. I think you can, you can make a pretty good living when you do stuff like that. Uh, Brandon Coleman, again, uh, 7.33. He was at the Combine. He is just taking part in the individual drills. They're called the position workouts. They follow the, uh, all the other 
uh, skill drills here, and they'll break it down by wide receiver first, then running back, then tight end, then offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, and defensive back. That's the way they, they work those position workouts, which come up later. Here's a, a look at uh, some of the other numbers from the three-cone drill. And Karan Pratt, as we, as we said, 6.75. So he was the fastest overall. And again, Marcus Thompson is just having Six, a really good day. Because at the combine, 6.83 was the fastest at for the linebacker in the, in the cone drill. So, I mean, he's right up there with those he's numbers. Right I there. mean, that's the thing that you want to look at. You know, the fastest number and all those, so also the average number and see where the guys end up at. And a lot of these guys are right on point for what you expect between their height and their size and their position group. All right, so there's the numbers for the three cone drill. And, you know, certain guys have had great pro days today. Marcus Thompson's doing really well. Uh, there's no question, I think, that, you know, Karan Pratt continues to excel. Jamal Morrell has done a good job here uh, during the day. And, of course, Jeremy Deering had, had some really good numbers. And last year, you know, Marcus Cooper is a guy who who excelled and what a year he had with the Kansas City Chiefs in his first year. He was a seventh round pick by San Francisco. Then he was claimed by Kansas City after being cut by the 49ers. And what a mistake they made because Coop just took off and ended up with 44 tackles and three interceptions this year in 16 games. And he joins us right now on our uh, set here at Pro Day. Congratulations, Marcus. What kind of year did you have in your mind? <laughs> Thanks. Uh... I think I had a pretty good year, but you know, it's always room for me to build on. And um, you know, I'm just blessed to be in the position I am. You could have, you know, put your head down after things didn't work out with the 49ers. Instead, you go out there and you win the award for the most productive Chiefs rookie, which is fantastic. So how did you keep your nose to the grind and how did you show the perseverance to continue and have such a such a marvelous year? Uh, just always having confidence in myself, you know. I, uh, I felt that I could play in this game and I felt that I could be a good contributing member to any team that I was on. And, uh, you know, that never wavered, you know, I always knew I could do that. So I just try to continue to go out there and grind and no matter what, just continue to stay focused and on task. Having such a productive rookie year, how did Coach Flood and the Rucker staff kind of prepare you to go right, right in right away and be productive? Oh, uh, no, I can't say enough about Coach Flood and his staff. You know, they've uh, prepared me so much mentally, physically, and, uh, you know, other things that you know, it's not really highlighted, but, you know, these guys have uh, put a, a great playbook in front of me on the defensive side, you know, NFL style playbook that's allowed me to come into the game and, you know, have some type of experience under me. And, you know, they uh, instill some confidence in me as well, which you know, just allowed me to go out there and shine. There are some highlights that, that we remember uh, of you, that great interception against UConn. You ended up winning the Swarm and Finish Award. So you did a lot of things here at Rutgers that, that uh, made these people around here proud. What was the experience like for you? Uh, it, was, uh, it was great. You know, I enjoyed my time in the banks. You know, um, you know, all these guys that I came with, you know, the Kasim Greens, uh, Devin Watkins, the Logan Ryans, the Ron Harmons, these guys are uh, excellent people to be around. You know, I always wanted to play it and go out and do the best I possibly can for those guys and as well as my coaches. You know, you had the interception I talked about against UConn, but you also picked off Peyton Manning. This year. <laughs> uh, give us the secret, you know? Uh, you know, just uh, have to attribute that to uh, just studying throughout the week, you know, and uh, being in the right place at the right time. You, when you were in college, you made the transition from receiver to cornerback. What kind of, you know, notes or something you can give a guy like Jeremy Derriman that's also making that transition? He made it from receiver, I mean, really from running back to receiver, receiver to kick returner, kick returner <laughs> to now playing safety. What kind of, you know, advice can you give a guy like him that's moving on, that's looking at today as a huge day for him going on into the National Football League? Uh, now tell him, you know, everything's a learning process. You know, don't ever want to get discouraged on anything that you do. Um, you know, I had some tough times out there, and uh, I couldn't take that as a, as a loss or anything. I couldn't lose uh, confidence in myself. So I just had to continue to fight through anything and fight through all the challenges, place my way, and just continue to learn each and every day. You're out of Bloomfield High School in Bloomfield, Connecticut, and, and you stayed fairly close to home. Are you glad you made the choice? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, it was uh, close enough where I could always get back home one but five enough while I was away. So, you know, I was able to grow up here as a man and, you know, try to become my own out here and have to, wouldn't have to worry about my parents being too far or too close to me to do so. What are your memories from the pro day last year? I mean, I know you came out here and you had a tremendous pro day. What's the one thing that sticks in your mind about not only your preparation for the pro day, but also, you know, you competing to the uh, last year? Well, I would have to say, the, you know, the most memorable thing for me is just my preparation. You know, I, uh, Went down to Atlanta with some great guys. Um, 
Anthony Glaude and Raheem Abdullah. You know, and these guys worked me out. And uh, just being with some guys down there, Khalil Glaude, he, uh, he helped me out. You know, we worked out together. And, we, uh, you know, continue to strive to get better out there. And, you know, that, that just means so much to me, though, just the process that we went through down there and just for me to show up and uh, put those numbers out on the board was great. The Rutgers tradition. There was a guy named Darren Cherry who was a, a great player for the Chiefs for many years. So you're another Rutgers guy sure. that's broken through with Kansas City. And you're in a position to make some real money <laughs> going forward. Do you ever do you ever worry or think about that or you just feel like it, it'll, it'll fall in place a, as time goes on? Yeah, you know, I try not to worry about that money. Um, I'm really in it to win a ring, you know, and uh, that's and that's being has to be the goal for me, and has to be the goal for my teammates. You know, uh, anything else that comes along is a bonus. All right, well, you'll take Jamal and I out to dinner when, <laughs> when, things, when things really go well for you. Marcus, great year. We wish you a lot of luck and Thanks, uh, you know. Great success thus far, and, and the sky's the limit for you, so we wish you the best, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So that's Marcus Cooper, who had a tremendous year with the Chiefs in his first season in the NFL. Three interceptions. He recovered that fumble for a touchdown in Week 5 against Tennessee, and he never looked back. Three picks of the season. He was their most productive rookie this year. Here's the 20-yard shuttle results. Jeremy Deering at 4.43. See, Nick Napala shines. And again, Chase Dodd, very impressive in these short first drills. 4.30, doing better than even Deering and Marcus Thompson. Uh, a little surprised or no? I mean, he, he, he's the guy that has, he has natural leverage. He's a shorter guy, so he can move a little quicker. He can touch the ground a little quicker. Taller guys normally have a trouble at uh, something like the 20-yard shuffle because to be able to go from a 6'6", six, six, and touch the ground to get back up to go the other way. It's always a little bit more difficult because smaller guys, you know, always better than well. Wes Walker had a good, you know, 20-yard shuttle because he's quick in a short area. He's a shorter guy, but he can, you know, get in and out of those breaks very quickly. Yeah, but you know, if you if the lineman did a better job, these guys wouldn't have to worry about that stuff. You know, <laughs> that is true. All right, we're going to bring in another guest right now, Tim Wright. A pleasure to have. Uh, the young man who played for the Bucks and was a surprise, and you're another one of these guys. I, I guess you were a free agent, right, Tim? Yeah, I was a free agent. Yeah. How cool is it to to make it to the big time and and not be looked at, you know, and passed over for a big part of it, and then showing what you got? You know, man, um, everything I learned at Rutgers, I just instilled it into my mentality, and I went out there and I just grinded away. I didn't think about, you know, things that I couldn't couldn't change or couldn't handle, and um, everything worked out. Making that transition from receiver to tight end full-time and being one of the, the bright rookie tight ends this year playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, what kind of advice can you give a guy like Morrell making the transition from defensive end to outside linebacker? Because you made that transition and you came in and you really were forced to be reckoned with this year. Um, I think the first step is just taking it with open arms and then from there just taking it really slow, taking it one day at a time and um, trying to learn everything of the position that you can, trying to learn the ins and outs of the schemes. And uh, from there, that gives you confidence. And from there, you just apply it on the field, and things will work out for you. Pro Day was a great vehicle for you, Tim, to, to show what you had and to impress a lot of people that maybe didn't know that much about you. Yeah, it was, it was definitely um, a platform for me to get my name out there, for scouts to see who I am, and other coaches and, and GMs around the, around the NFL to really know who I am. But uh, once I got, got on a roster and actually produced for my team and started producing in games, that's when people really realized who I was, and uh, that's what I'm continuing to do. Did you and Khalil Glaude have, have a harmonious uh, feeling because the two of you guys both were from Rutgers, both were free agents, both were with the Bucks. Did you kind of have each other's backs? Yeah, it, it definitely was like, you know, a small fraternity down there, um, especially with the other guys that were there and also the other rookies that came in with me in the rookie program and the rookie minicamp. Uh, it was cool, but we stuck together throughout the whole year. We sat next to each other in the team room, and um, it definitely was a good camaraderie going. What kind of advice has a guy like Taekwon Underwood, you know, a guy that came through Rutgers program, was successful and now plays with the Bucks? what kind of advice did he give you this year on your rookie year? I mean, he also played with different teams and everything like that, and you came in and you played a lot as a rookie. What kind of advice you know, did he give you? Um, he, you know, he told me, uh, you're only as good as your last play. And, and whatever you put on film, all the other teams, the other 31 teams are watching. So uh, I went out there every play and tried to make it as perfect as I can. And that's what I drilled during the week, during practice. Um, he told me, know your assets, know your strength, and uh, just basically put it on film. When I watched you as a youngster here, you were always running 
post patterns and, 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 and speed routes and plays to the outside. And now here you are, this, this big tight end. I never expected you to, to make this transition. Did you? You know, um, I, I, really didn't, I really didn't know for sure. I just knew that I was a person that always worked hard at whatever position I was in. And at the end of the day, that gives you the most opportunity to, you know, to see another play. So that's, like I said, that's what I took it in. That's what I went to the NFL like, with the mentality that I had, and uh, that's what I applied every day when I went into work. Jamal, he's fast as a tight end, right. where he was adequate as a speedy guy as a wideout. So now it, it like kind I, of benefits him. Like I said, tweener. I mean, he was a receiver, but he was strong enough to play tight and to be able to block the defensive end. He had the end. guns. You know, and maybe <laughs> if people say, oh, he wasn't the fastest receiver, but as a tight end, he's quick. I mean, we played against him, and he was all over the place. And what type of improvements you're looking to make in you know, this offseason and program to kind of improve for next year, you know, in your second season? Um, I definitely want to keep my strength, which is being a pass catching tight end. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to you know, maximize that strength, but um, I want to work on blocking, you know, being a guy that can be in there every play of the game and uh, definitely uh, blocking guys like, you know, Westy and big guys that, that's on the edge, you know, guys like that. So that's what I want to work on is blocking and uh, just being a better all-around player. What, was it kind of cool playing for your college coach, Greg Ciano, in the pros? Yeah, it was cool. It's crazy how things work out. I mean, you know, what, what happened when he, when he went to the Bucks, we didn't know, and then all of a sudden now I'm playing with him again. And that's the nature of the NFL. That's the nature of football. You could be playing for one guy, he'll move or you'll move. Next thing you know, two or three years down the road, you'll be playing for him again. So that's the cool nature of it. You uh, keep those relationships long-lasting and uh, great things will come to you. And what about Coach Kyle Flood in terms of the way that he, you know, took – took the mantle and and took the uh, took the lead from Greg you know it was passed the torch was essentially passed from one to the other and you didn't have that much uh, to deal with them because you were not with the offensive line right. back when he was an offensive line guy but what kind of relationship did you have with Kyle oh a great relationship um, I mean it was a lot of continuity that he just continued to, to bring to the program and a lot of things didn't change a lot of things stuck like stayed stayed true to what it was and all the leaders on the team, um, they knew that. And we took it in with open arms and we applied it to the younger guys, just feeding them the culture of how, how Rutgers operates. And uh, it, it was a great thing and he's doing a great job. You're known for toughness. I mean, you're a guy that had a major ACL injury and be able to come back and play so well. And that toughness, even today, being a, a kind of a pass catching receiver, tight end hybrid, to be able to stand up against those big guys. What does that say about how Rutgers has developed you into that, that tough guy that can be, like you said, and every down tight end now. Oh man, I, I just I just apply it to all the off season workouts when um, we're, we're we're lined up on that line and we're doing those sprints or we're doing those lifts and you see all the other guys from other programs that might be dying out or you know might not have the same mentality as us and you think about it like we was out on this field grinding at 4:30 in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? We 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 all held each other accountable. We all did those things together. And uh, once you branch out into those NFL teams or whatever league you go into, you realize how much hard work and how much grinding and all the stuff that you put into. And uh, it definitely applies itself when you, when you go into other leagues. Tim, you think about the multitude of players from Rutgers who have made it when they started out as an unrestricted free agent. The list is impressive. Last year, seven guys made the NFL who were not drafted. So to be part of that fraternity, you got to take some pride in it. Oh yeah, it's a great fraternity. I was thinking about that the other day when I was planning on coming to the Pro Day. You know, just thinking about all the guys, how it's a culture for the, the past record guys coming back to the Pro Day and um, all of us catching up again. And you see a lot of guys here. And that's, that's a great thing. You see a lot of guys sitting in the seat doing interviews and stuff so you know th those are the type of things that you got to take proud be proud of you know um, going back and knowing that you got a lot of guys that's in the NFL from from the same school that you went to you know who else was an unrestricted free agent <laughs> right and came into the league and wasn't drafted and is now in his sixth year wait a minute wait a minute yeah. I was the first pick of the eighth round, oh. the eighth round. Oh, I never checked that page yeah. no it's, it's, it's a great story man and and Every one of us has our own little story that we can bring to the puzzle. And when you look at the programs and when you look when you go to the games and see all the NFL people that's that's on the board, it's just, you know, it's impressive. Jamal's called you a hybrid. I don't know how many miles you get per gallon, but I'll tell you, <laughs> you're doing a good job, Tim. You, you you handled yourself well this year and, and you've got a bright future. So good luck good luck, my friend. All right, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Tim. All right, so Tim Wright joining us, another one of those 
unrestricted free agents, guy who wasn't drafted, ends up in the NFL. So there's hope for a lot of people. More Pro Day coming up right here from the bubble on the campus of Rutgers University.
second. 17 Rutgers players, 25 scouts. This is Rutgers Pro Day 2014. I'm Bruce Beck along with Jamal Westerman who has turned into a color commentator. <laughs> and Brandon Jones joins us now. What a story he has to tell us about considering the road that he has traveled this year to end up with a team that he's going to be with for the next 10 years, the Chargers. <laughs> Brandon, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about the growth that you made this year and you actually made three other stops with pro teams before you ended up with the Chargers. How did you keep your head, head uh, you know, above water and, and stay focused? And, and tell us a little bit about where you've been. Um, you know, it was, it was a tough uh, transition into the NFL, you know. Um, started with New England, ended up uh, getting released from there, going to New York Giants, then going over to Pittsburgh, and then ended up in San Diego. But, you know, um, the guys here is what kept me motivated, you know, sending me texts whenever I got released or whenever I got signed, just telling me to keep my head up and keep grinding. And, and, and I think I'm in a good situation now in San Diego. How about the ability to be able to be versatile? I mean, really, you got to move from team to team. How did Rutgers kind of help you with that, to be able to keep your head up like Bruce said and kind of pick up the different playbooks and keep fighting through, like you said, you know, that tough situation you had early in the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, the seasons we had here weren't always great, but um, we always found a way to, you know, you know, make bowl games and, and be, be, good, be a good team. And, and I think just that, that camaraderie we built together um, um, really kept me motivated through the process. And, and like I said, you know, Coach Yano did some chopping and, and, and uh, just, just keep chopping. That was my motto through that whole situation. And, and I think it's going to turn out good. You feel confident that the Chargers will be a good home for you? I do. I really do. You know, I felt every way about every team I, I went to. I felt that way. I felt like it was going to be a good opportunity. Right. But this one is fit. real. But yeah, you know, and you hope so. And all you can do is work, you know, to the best of your ability and be the best player you can be and, and let the chips fall where they may. You know, you go back to your days at Winslow Township High School. You're a kid from Sicklerville, so you know this is this is home for you. It's it's not far from from where you grew up. Is it kind of still family and still special in that regard? Yeah, man, I, I love coming back here and, and you know seeing seeing all the guys, seeing the coaches, and it's a lot of new faces. But you know, at the end of the day, they're still family. You know what I mean? So. Um, I'm really excited for the Big Ten this year for these guys, and, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching every game I can, you know. So just, just hats off to what Coach Flood is doing for this organization, for this team, and, and, and I'm excited for him. How was it your pro day seeing all these guys, you know, last year come back to watch you, to kind of cheer you on, to give you advice and kind of help you do good? How was that seeing, you know, guys coming back? You know, um, as you're in school here and you come to pro day and you see all the guys, you never really – think it's going to happen to you until the day comes and like, wow, this is my day, you know what right. I mean? And seeing, seeing all the guys come back and, and cheer me on, it was, it was very nerve-wracking. I was nervous. I was so nervous, man. My heart was beating. I got down on that line. I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, you know, just, just seeing the guys come back and you, you, see, you feel the family. You can feel the family atmosphere. And, and, you know, I see you a lot, you know, right. when we train together. But, um, you know, just seeing guys you haven't seen in a long time, it's always a good feeling. So you're old now is what you're saying. Now you're the one <laughs> yeah. imparting wisdom to these young guys. I try. <laughs> well, what would you tell them or what do you tell them about this whole process? You know, I tell them, first, you know, I was talking to some guys the other day. I tell them take care of school first. When you take care of school and, you know, you're doing well in the classroom and, and you know, study hall, you're not going to study hall eight hours a day, I mean, eight hours a week. You know, football comes easy because that's what they're good at. You know what I mean? That's something they've been doing their whole lives. So. I tell them, take care of school, man, and, and when you get on that field, you know, one day at a time, do the be, be the best player you can be, and, and I think Coach Flood is doing a great job, and, and I think these guys are going to have a good season this year, man. I'm excited for them. Do you realize how many guys in the NFL were from the secondary that you were a part of here at Rutgers 2011, 2012? I mean, it, it's a large number. Is there a camaraderie among that group as well? Absolutely, man. We all stay in touch. You know, and, and me, Logan Duran, we're in New England for a while together. But, you know, I just, you know, went on vacation with Coop, Marcus Cooper the other, a couple weeks ago, and, and we, all, we all keep in touch. And, and, you know, those will always be, you know, brothers for the rest of my life, no matter, you know, what happens, how far apart we are, you know, distance-wise. They'll always be family, and, and they always know they, they got somebody to call, and I know I always have somebody to call. How did you ever let anybody catch a pass with that group? I mean, you guys shouldn't have allowed any completions. Yeah, man, I don't know how many completions we let up. I mean... We had, a, we had a very good group, very solid group, and, and, you know, it was a great group to be a part of. And, and the hats off to Coach Yano recruiting, you know what I mean? And uh, hats off to Coach Flood for, you know, 
finishing that, that 2012 year, that our senior year, it was a great year. And uh, many more great years to come here. So, so I'll tell you, keep chopping. It definitely is a true thing when you talk about Brandon Jones. It, it and and, and it, it all happened in a short time, and he kept chopping from one team to the next, and now he's got a home, and hopefully for 10 years, you know? Appreciate it. Good Bruce. stuff. Appreciate Good it. Stuff. Thanks yes, a lot, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, let's go to the results of the 60 yard shuttle and see how that worked out. That's 5, 5, 10, 10, 15, 15. Uh, and here's a look at the numbers for that. Jeremy Deering again. Uh, impressive, 11.56. Keep in mind, 10.72 is the best at the combine. Brandon Cooks of Oregon State, a wide receiver who also excelled in the 20 yard shuttle. That was his number. But uh, you look around here, Jamal, and there's a good one by Karan Pratt, no surprise. Marcus Thompson continues to impress. And I think Lou Toller right. is having a solid pro day. He's having a very solid pro day. The thing with the 60 yard shuttle is not only quickness, but it's also that range of motion, how you bend, change of direction, and also endurance. It might be the only thing they test when it comes to endurance because the short shuttle is a short shuttle. And with the 60 yard, it takes more of a, you know, you run five back, 10 back, 15 back. So it's a little bit more endurance to see how long you can keep that top end speed. This uh, tells the NFL scouts if you've got some endurance as well as quickness. I mean, I, I know it's only 60 yards, but can you keep it going, you know? They say in track and field, the hardest race is the 800 meters because you can't really run slowly and you, you can't make it a full sprint, but it's got to be at a high level. This 60, I think, is a better barometer in terms of some of that aspect, the, 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 the endurance, the continuing motion. Right. The other stuff is just boom, 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 right. quickness. You I mean, because at six, you have to go as fast as you can, but you, have, you can't go too fast because you know you have to come right back and then back to the 10, back again, and then the 15 and on. So it's how you handle your body, how you change levels from full speed running to dropping down, touching that line, and coming back. So the 60 is huge for you know, receivers, DB, kind of showing how fast they can move in a short area, but over a long period of time. All right, what we'd like to do uh, is uh We'll do a recap of the day in terms of the results, and we'll also have Coach Kyle Flood here with us. Uh, he'll be sharing some of his thoughts, and here it is along a beautiful spreadsheet. And I can tell you, in looking at this, that Jeremy Deering had, had an outstanding day. Paul Carazzola did nicely for his grouping as a tight end. Very you know? solid day. I mean, I can see him. You know, he went out and the thing with this, guys train hard for this. So it's their day to go out and show, listen, this is who I am. You know, schemes may be different. Coaching staff may be different. But this is who I am as a player, you know, and as an athlete. And so, so a lot of these guys went out there and showed that they're very athletic. A lot of guys were strong in the bench press, and a lot of guys can move. And that's the biggest thing that you know, teams are looking for. You know, they see your film. They watch the way you play. But well, let's see how athletic you are when you stack up against, you know, all the other other guys coming out in your draft class. Brandon Coleman, by the way, did not participate in the individual uh, skill drills, but he now is doing the, the, the stuff that they call the position workout. So that's good that he'll get a chance to show some stuff there. Karan Pratt's numbers, I said earlier today, were exceptional. And, and Karan's also working out as DB today also. So he's not only doing the wide receiver positional drill, but he's also doing the cornerback position. Where's he going to end up? You never know. You've got to be versatile. The more you can do, the better. He came here as a corner. He left as a wide out. He might be going, going back, back to, to his corner. roots. Similar to Cooper. Yep. Marcus Thompson, all, all across the board, was, was very impressive. And I thought Lou Toller uh, is another guy who had some, some really nice numbers today. Good athlete. Be able to come in you know, a program like this, to, you know, start his master's program, to come out and compete. I mean, I know that in the, during the year he was a little nicked up, but he had a very solid day and very impressive. So scouts are going to look at that and say, hey, man, this guy, you know, he played one year here on the banks and, you know, he had an impressive pro day. So it's going to be interesting to, to see, you know, where he ends up, you know, what teams are looking at him and how he does, you know, moving forward. Eight bowl games in the last nine years for Rutgers, and you certainly know why after, after hearing uh, the words of wisdom from a lot of these, these kids over the years. Let's take a look at some of the highlights uh, throughout the day. And, and, and we saw some great speed from Jeremy Deering. Uh, that was his final run. That was the 4.33 that was exceptional and had everybody clapping. Uh, overall, even the big fellas, they, they, showed, they showed some good stuff here. I mean, you know, guys showed who they are. I mean, Darren, everybody knew Darren was going to run fast. I didn't expect 4.33. I'm not going to lie. I expect a high 4.3, so he ran Carousel extremely had fast. A good day. Very solid, moving quick, athletic. He was good in the short shuttle and the, and the cone drills as well.
This is where Andre Sill so got hurt. So bit. that happens sometimes. It's not always fun. But with the offensive linemen, running 40 yards is not as important. What's going to be important for offensive linemen is how they perform in you know, the O-line positional drill. So the coach is going to put them through that to see how they move side to side, how they can pull, you know, how they come out of their stance. I'm not sure if Deering's uh, you know, a pro football player or headed to the UFC. He's <laughs> built really well and he's got some, some great athletic ability. Uh, Here's a look at, you know, Nick DePaula showed some great effort with the hair, kind of, fly, you know, wagging along. Chase Dodd, you know, he, he's got to be pleased with it, with a lot of those cone drills oh, and stuff man. like that. The short shuttle drill, the L drill, he did a great job. So now, you know, they're, they're going to put him through throwing the ball and seeing how he slings that rock. And that's one thing we know about Chase. He can throw that rock around. And big Dallas Hendrickson, who was the Iowa Western Community College transfer and, you know, had six starts this year. He, he didn't have great numbers, but I love his attitude. And Robert Jones, he was serious from the beginning of the day on. And Antoine Lowry, another guy who, you know, he, he's got some potential. Where is he going to end up? We don't know. The, the, the coaches are, can't wait to get their hands on him. You know, offensive line coaches, just to see how he moves. The 40, you know, different things like that with the offensive line. Sometimes it's not about, you know, how fast you run the 40, how fast you do the shuttle. It's can you play in this game and can you play in different schemes. So he's definitely a road grader. Jamil Morrell, uh, not as impressive as Jamal, who you just saw a moment ago. Jamal turned out that 4.64 or 4.65. Got to like that. And Pratt here with the explosion, the kid from Palmyra who had – his uh, brilliant kickoff return this year was a semifinals for the Campbell Trophy. And Marcus Thompson, uh, uh, just a super day. I mean, he had a, a, a very good day for him. I mean, I think the scouts are going to be in the room reevaluating his stock. I mean, all the numbers he did were top numbers if he was at the combine. I mean, making that transition from defensive end outside linebacker in that 3 4 system is going to be big for him. Only five starts for Lou Toller, only 25 tackles, but, you know, he's a guy that uh, had a chance to, to show some stuff. You can get yourself in front of these scouts and really make a team here. You know, the scouts would be like, oh, we didn't know about this guy. We didn't see too much film of him, but he can play. He can run like everybody else. You know, he got hurt against Louisville and, you know, broke his arm. So that kind of hurt his season. But you look at some of the things he did, that the 10 tackles against Eastern Michigan, it showed his ability. That five tackle game against Fresno, where you also had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. And he broke up a pass in his debut game. I think Toller's a guy who, if he gets a chance, maybe he comes on as a as a free agent somewhere, and, and he blossoms. I mean, just getting these scouts' eyes on him, he only played five games this year because of injuries, so they don't know where he is in his recovery. But to get these scouts to see him, look, I'm running the 40, I'm doing different things that everybody else is doing, it's really going to be an opportunity for him to go out and make a team this year. This is a whole day. It began at 8 o'clock with the breakfast for the scouts and the staff. It's continuing now with the, with the workouts by position. So it's a commitment for, for these players and for the 25 scouts that are here today. But I think it'll turn out to be you know, a blessing for a lot of individuals. I mean, t today this doesn't start today. I mean, these guys, a lot of these guys from the day the bowl game ended, a lot of these guys took a week off and mm -hmm. then they were diving deep into their training, into their preparation for you know, the, the, the pro day or the combine. Two and a half months. I mean, they just dive into it straight. And they always say your rookie year is always the longest in the NFL because you go from the end of, you go from your season to, you take a week off, you're into the pro day training, you're into OTAs, you're into the training camp, you're into the season. And my rookie year, we end up going to the AFC Championship game. So you got, yeah, I mean, a that's, it's a blessing, but it's a long year. Yes, and that's is. why they say a lot of rookies hit that rookie wall in about week 10 or week 11, because the NFL season is, you know, 16, 17 weeks. And, you know, college is only 12, 13 games, you know. It's kind of cool that we're, we're here in the bubble, not far from, from where the Scarlet Walk takes place every home game, which commemorates the first ever intercollegiate football game between Rutgers and Princeton in 1869. And today, here at the birthplace of college football, the tradition continues with this pro day. And we're pleased that we're televising this for a fifth year. But this is something that's really a part of what uh, Rutgers football and the program is all about. Right, because these guys not only represent Rutgers while they're playing, but they're going to represent Rutgers moving forward into the National Football League. And I know the fans, you know, the fans that have come up to me, like, man, I watched you at Rutgers, and I was so excited to see you moving forward into the Jets and to the Colts and the different teams, the Pittsburgh and different teams I played for. So the fans here are great. I mean, they follow their guys all the time. They're always fans of you, you know, from the times you were here on the banks, you know, to whatever team you end up to, and also post-career. So there's some more numbers as we look at uh, how everyone did here at Pro Day. Getting set to hear from the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Kyle Flood, to get his uh, perspective on how some of these guys showed and, and uh, what their future might 
hold for them because there's a lot of bright people oh, yeah, here sure who <laughs> certainly will make a difference in NFL camps. And, and you look at the history of Rutgers football and so many free agents and so many guys drafted and, and the tradition continues. Kyle Flood joins us heading into his third year here at Rutgers University as the head coach. Kyle, first of all, taking all this in today, have you enjoyed it? And, and what what'd you, what'd you like about it? Ah, I'll tell you, Bruce, this is, this is one of the best days of the year for us. And and Jamal is a great example of why to, to have so many of the former players come back and it, it certainly is a, a day that's going to change the lives uh, of a lot of our seniors and guys that are moving forward and I think some of them had pretty good days today. It's, I saw the results for the first time as we were putting them on the TV and it looks like Jeremy Deering had a pretty good day, Paul Carazola, Karan Pratt, and that doesn't surprise me, Marcus Thompson and I'm sure they're not the only ones, I just got a quick glimpse of it but th to have the, the combination of all the players come back and this season going into my 10th season here at Rutgers to see guys like Val Barnaby come back, to see a guy like Ish Medley come back, to see a guy like William Beckford come back, and to have Jamal right here with us, along with all the more recent guys that I know have been on set today, it's, a, it's truly one of the best days for our program every year. So it could be called Our Family Day as well as Our Pro Day. It could be. It should be Our Pro Day slash Our <laughs> Reunion. <laughs> How is it, you know, these guys going out here, I mean, they're going to do the position drills now. How important is that, that, you know, you've seen these guys grow. I mean, you've seen a lot of these guys grow from, I mean, I was, when I came in, I was 195 pounds soaking wet into 265-pound defensive and outside linebacker. How important are these drills they're doing out here today, moving forward into their NFL careers? I, I think they're really important. And I think any time, any time you get an opportunity to work out for somebody or for a team, it, it's a job interview. And they're evaluating everything. I mean, you know you play at the highest level. And if you want to do anything at the highest level, you're going to be evaluated on everything you do. And today there were a lot of tangible things, some heights, some weights, some numbers in lifting, some numbers in running. But now you know, they're doing these position drills for a reason. And the coaches that are coaching them are coaching them for a reason. And I think it's a great opportunity. So I think it's important. I don't think you ever want to look at an opportunity and devalue it. I think any of these coaches that came here today came here in mind of trying to find a player. And if you can get yourself in front, you got a great opportunity. We're headed into a new era of Rutgers football, the Big Ten Conference. Penn State, Michigan, Wisconsin at home, Nebraska, Ohio State, uh, Michigan State on the road. It's going to be a tremendous year. What does it mean to the program to be affiliated with this conference? I think the, you know, the most important thing to our fan base, the most important thing to our program, and the most important thing to future recruits is a streamlined path to the national championship game. And I think any team that plays major college football wants to have that. And it's really hard in, in the system we're in right now to foresee a situation where the Big Ten champion will not be in the Final Four and playing for that national championship. But, but we certainly feel like this was the conference that best fit us and we best fit them. You know, we are very similar to all these universities in this conference, large state universities, quality educations, and institutions that not only value athletics, but value education at the same time. Uh, we have a proven, of track, uh, proven track record of success on the field, eight bowl games in nine years, off the field, uh, new all-time highs in our team GPA each of the last four semesters. Uh, so we've achieved in both areas, and we really feel like this is the company we want to keep, and we're excited about it. Having a bowl game-winning uh, players and high academic players. You know, you had Darnell Stapleton on the staff the last two years. You, you now brought in Mike, Mike Teal as a general assistant. How do you feel to be able to give these guys an opportunity, guys that have played so well for Rutgers in the past and are good Rutgers men, give them opportunity to come back and help build up, you know, th this team moving forward into the Big Ten? I think it's great to be able to give them the opportunity because they're the right people for those jobs. And I think that's important and, and certainly to, be, to come into a, a football program as a, as a graduate assistant coach, it's a very coveted position. It's a very competitive job market, so to speak, in, in this profession. And now to have been able to bring Darnell Stapleton here a couple of years ago, and now he's moved on and he's coaching at, at another school. And to have the ability to bring Charlie Noonan in, another guy who played and was a really good player in our program. And now he's in his second year as a graduate assistant with us. And they, and they have the opportunity to bring Mike Teal back. I think any time you can bring somebody back, and not only are they the right person for the job, but it's the right time to bring them back. It's a great example to every player in the program because now you have guys on their staff that have been there, that have done that, that have sat in those chairs as players, sat in those chairs as student athletes, and have been great examples from afar, and now they can be great examples within our own program. 
Cal, you always talk about recruiting the state of New Jersey. With your 26 new people this year, you've got eight New Jersey kids. You've got three from New York, three from Pennsylvania. But you've also shown the ability to reach elsewhere. North Carolina, Michigan, Texas, Virginia, Minnesota. They are part of this 26-player group. So what does that mean in terms of your national focus and your local focus? I think you're exactly right. And that probably goes a little bit more back to the, the Big Ten question you asked a couple minutes ago. And I think what one of the other things the Big Ten Conference has done for us is it has made us, it has opened up areas that we would be non-traditional areas. And to have a player from Minnesota, to have a player from Texas. Uh, we've always had players from Florida, but we've got some from some different parts of Florida that we haven't really been to uh, in the past. And I think all those things are possible because not only are we interested in them as student athletes, but they're interested in us as an institution and they're interested in playing in the Big Ten Football Conference. I was looking at the depth chart for next year, and so I see guys, you've got your three running backs back, James Goodwin Huggins. You've got Tyler Croft, your tight end, who could be outstanding. Carew and Peel, your wideouts. You've got Caleb Johnson anchoring the offensive line. Your big defensive linemen, Hamilton and Mara. You've got Snyder, Long, and Gauze, all experienced linebackers, and you've got Lorenzo Waters of safety. That's just a few names, but that's a lot of nucleus to go forward with. Do you like this group, or are you, are you excited about this group? I'm really excited about this group, and I think there's really only one or two positions on the entire team where we don't have somebody coming back who's played a significant amount of time. Uh, we've got one safety position where that'll be the case. Uh, we've got a punter that we got to find uh, this spring and going into next fall. But other than that, we've got people all over the field that have been in the competitive environment. And I think that'll serve us well. Uh, we've played in some different stadiums and, and against some different programs over the last couple of years. So, you know, the fact that we've got some new teams on the schedule, I don't know that that's as big an issue. But I do think it's always an advantage when you can bring back experience. And now the expectation level, I think, has to rise. You know, we're going to bring back five offensive linemen that have all played in games with a tight end, with a fullback, with a tailback. And so our expectations for the running game have gone up, and we expect to produce more and better than we have the last couple of years. We've got a lot of players back on defense who've played a lot of football, and we feel like our defense is going to return to playing a high quality of defense that people around Rutgers have, have, known, have, have known to come over the years. Hey, you've got a couple of All-Americans in this group, too. You've got Tyler Croft. You've got Steve Longa. That bodes well for Rutgers. It does, and they're quality people, and they've done an excellent job this offseason, and we're off to a great start. And we're really nearing the end of our winter program this week. We'll go on spring break next week, and then we'll come back, and we start spring practice. And those five weeks of spring practice are five of the most critical weeks of the year. And I know as, as football coaches, if you ask us any day of the year, then we're going to tell you this week is the most critical week of the year because it's the only one we control. But anytime we get to go on the field and coach football and play football as a program, the stakes go up, and it's really important for us. And, and we can't wait to get back from spring break to get it started. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you, and let me say thank you again for coming to Pro Day, Bruce, and thank you to Jamal for co-hosting this year. He's the analyst. You know, well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to reviewing this tape after I get out of the bubble today, and, and I'll have some comments for Jamal. We'll see yeah, how this Break it down for me, Coach. <laughs> the kid from Bayside, New York, St. Francis Prep, and Iona College, head coach Kyle Flood. Thanks, Kyle. We'll thank take you. a short break. Complete results coming up in a moment as Rutgers Pro Day 2014 finishes up here at the bubble.
Rutgers Pro Day continues 2014. Bruce Beck with Jamal Westerman. One of the guys who we haven't seen take part in those individual drills is Brandon Coleman, who took place at the, uh, you know, took part in all the stuff at the NFL Combine. He ended up with a 4.56 in the 40 yard dash, which you say was pretty uh, good considering he's 6'6, 220. Tallest guy at the Combine is 6'6, rating at 225 at the Combine. I mean, in the bench press, he's a strong guy. He did 21, the, the, the best was 23, so he was second at the bench press. I mean, he's a big, rangy guy, can really go up and get the ball. And that's, that's big for teams looking at a guy you can throw it up to and, you know, he can come down with the ball, not only in the field, but also in the red zone. He had 94 catches this year for uh, for his career, 1,808 yards, 21.6 yards per catch, which is mind-boggling. When you think about his 20 career touchdowns, which is tied for first in school history in terms of receptions, I mean, the guy left a indelible mark here. I mean, t 10 touchdowns is last year. He had six this year, and he was a little nicked up this year. So the scouts really want to see, okay, I know he was nicked up. Let's see how he moves out here. I mean, he had a tremendous day at the NFL Combine. Four Four five at you know six six two two twenty five and today he's running good routes out there. But Scott's really want to see. Let's see how we run his route. Let's see how he gets in and out of his breaks, and let's see how he catches the ball with his hands. And that's what's going on right now. He ended up with a vertical jump also at the combine of 32 and a half inches. So Jamal, it's been fun sharing this with you today. I think for a lot of guys, this was a great vehicle to get them either a, a free agent opportunity or maybe get you know selected in the NFL draft. You get your body in front of the scouts. Now the scouts can pick you apart. These drills they're doing now, scouts pick what drills work for them. They might say, okay, we want to do this drill because this is what we do in practice. And you know these guys, it's an opportunity to go out there to kind of let it fly and do what they do. I mean, it's back to football. They've been training since you know their bowl game for this day and after this day like that like, like some of the guys said it's not the end it's only the beginning you know to go out now you have to go out to OTAs you know perform well training camp make a team and hopefully like some of these young guys we had today have a tremendous you know rookie season and moving on into the rest of your career Thanks to Jason Baum and the entire uh, Rutgers Sports Media Information Group for equipping us with lots of the material for Pro Day. It's been a, it's been a great pleasure, uh, Jamal, working with you, and I think we got to see some players of the future and got to share some great moments with, with guys from the past who have served Rutgers well in every regard. I mean, I'm so happy you know, and excited just where the program is going into the Big Ten. I mean, I'm looking at the schedule, Wisconsin homecoming, we got Penn State coming in. I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, and excited to see, you know, the packed Rucker Stadium. So for the fans and everybody, pack the point next year and let's go out and make it rowdy and, you know, good season for the guys next year. The Big Ten is coming and it's coming soon. So for Jamal Westerman and Anthony Fusilli, I'm Bruce Beck. Thanks so much for joining us for the 2014 edition of Rutgers Pro Day.